Good evening, everyone. Welcome to City Stadium in Richmond, Virginia, as we get you ready for USL Pro Playoff action as the Richmond Kickers entertain the Charleston Battery. The Kickers, the fourth seed in the USL Pro Playoffs, and Charleston comes in as the fifth seed this evening. The last time these two teams met here at City Stadium back on July 19th, it was Richmond posting a 4-0 win. But since that defeat, the Charleston Battery have closed out the regular season on a seven-win one loss, three draw mark, and that their last game as they closed out the regular season with a 2-1 win over Harrisburg. These two teams are bitter rivals, and they square off again. They've met three times during the regular season with Richmond posting a victory and two draws. So should be an interesting contest tonight. As I mentioned, Charleston on a roll with that 7-1 and three mark to close out the regular season. And joining me, of course, is Mark Bushman. And Mark, uh, these uh, mentioned... Tremendous rivalry in USL Pro between these two long-standing rivals. Well, absolutely. I mean, you can't get much better than this. You've got two guys that don't like each other very much. There's a long history between the two. Richmond absolutely destroyed them 4-0 right. on July the 19th. Since then, Louis Charleston's only lost one game. Yep. So they're coming in on a roll. Richmond's struggling a little bit. Mike, they haven't won a game in a month. Right, exactly. The last time uh, Richmond, they closed out their regular season on the road, and they went on the road, had uh, two draws and a loss, and they fell from the second seed all the way down to the fourth seed, and they are the fourth seed tonight, and as I mentioned earlier, Charleston is the fifth seed. The uh, Charleston battery is led by Dane Kelly, 10 goals on the season as he has scored in double figures with those 10 goals. And Cordovas has four goals for Charleston. So a very, you want to watch those two. And Cordovas is not even starting tonight. He's going to be coming off the bench. That's exactly right. I'll tell you what, it shows he's got a little bit of depth. Yes, exactly. Team, just like Richmond does, you know, Max Delicott, he's one of the leading scorers for the year. Yep. Still got a little bit of an injury issue there, so he's going to be coming off the bench. But, yeah. Uh, but yeah, like I said, I mean, this is a great rivalry between these two clubs, and it's going to be a uh, nice playoff game, great atmosphere. Right. Delicott leads the way in scoring for uh, Richmond with 14 goals to, on the regular season. George Davis IV, who came on mark late in the season, uh, scoring some key goals. He has 11 goals and five assists on the season for Richmond. And they really, he got off to a blazing start for Richmond early in the year, then went into a little bit of a tailspin where he couldn't find the back of the net. But in the last few games, he has found the back of the net. And that's something that Lee Collishaw is very happy about. Yeah. Right. You've got a young keeper in Ryan Taylor. He's going to need to really be at his best tonight, and I think he can do it. He's got a great front group in front of him, and, you know, he needs to make a make touch, make an early save. Yeah. Back to, to get right. Into the game. What about the psyche of this team? You mentioned the leadership. Yeah, that's – but they are coming in kind of like, say, they left Richmond heading on that West Coast to, to close out the regular season. Here they are, the fourth seed. How much of a factor do you, th do you think that is for their psyche? Well, I, I think they're probably reeling just a little bit. You know, like I said, because you drop points to two of the last teams in the league, quite honestly. Right. County and to Dayton. So it does kind of affect you a little bit. But like I said, they've had a week to, to regroup their playing at home. It's one of the really good crowds. They're going to have a lot of veterans uh, leadership here. Right. Exactly. Right. Exactly right. Right. Exactly. Yeah, there is no game after tomorrow if you lose tonight. There is no game in the future if you got to win to keep moving on. Uh, three wins and you're into the uh, championship final. We're going to step aside and we're going to have our national anthem for you this evening from City Stadium here in Richmond, Virginia.
Yeah, beautiful rendition of the national anthem right there from that young lady. <laughs> what, how do these kids get these voices at such an early age? That's what I want to know, I'll tell you. Glad you're along with us, Mike Neville and Mark Bushman, along with the Richmond Kickers and the Charleston Battery getting ready to square off in the opening round of the USL playoffs. And Charleston has brought a little bit of a fan base up here to Richmond over there in the corner. Uh, they got a flag that they're waving, and uh, they're going to be very vocal throughout uh, tonight's contest as well. That's for sure, as uh, the Kickers will square out the starting lineups in goal tonight for Charleston. It is Odisnell Cooper, and he was also voted on the last uh, USL Pro Team of the Week. He was voted as the goalkeeper. Taylor Mueller will be starting on defense for Charleston. Also number six, Sean Ferguson. We mentioned Dane Kelly, one of the uh, forwards. He's got 10 goals on the season. Also starting in the midfield is number 11, Quinton Griffith. Also number 14, starting in the midfield, that's Jared Van Shake. Also starting for Charleston is Justin Portillo in the midfield. He'll be wearing number 20. And Amudu Sang Yang will be starting in the midfield as well, number 23. Zach Prince starting in the midfield, number 24. John Wilson starting on defense, number 25. And also Ho Jose Cuevas also starting for the Charleston Battery. And you've got Richmond starting lineup. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. And uh, Richmond will be in the red uniforms uh, with the uh, red jerseys, the red shorts, and the red socks. And Charleston will be in the yellow black jerseys, black shorts, and black socks. Socks. Our center referee is Charles Carson this evening for tonight's playoff. Also, the uh, referee's assistants are James Brooks and Jeffrey Skinker, the other assistant referee. And we're underway, and the kicker is now with possession. We're the Sante dropping it back to Gorez, and he taps it over into the midfield area to Vercoloni. Vercoloni goes wide, and the ball is settled down now for Richmond on the far side. Right. You know, that, that four and up in game that Richmond won back on July 19th here, we really thought Richmond had really rounded into form and was playing better than anybody else in the league. And since then, like you said, it, the roles have reversed a little bit. Yep. So. And that, as you mentioned, Mark, that 4 nothing win, probably the most complete game we saw first and second half from Richmond all season long. And we thought that was the one that was going to, you know, they had a chance to win the regular season crown. But like I say, they went into that little tailspin. They lost. Uh, they've only lost once here at home. That was to Orlando City. That was a big matchup, and Orlando City prevailed. And then, like I said, the, uh, going on the uh, West Coast swing there, uh, they ended up with two draws and then, of course, closed out the season with a loss at Orlando City. So a little bit of a tailspin for the Richmond Kickers. We're just underway here at City Stadium, expecting a pretty decent crowd, although the threatening weather may have something to do keeping the crowd down, to be quite honest with you, because we do have some gray skies, and uh, we've had some on-again, on again, off-again rain all, all night, or all day, I should say, in the Richmond area. Playoff, that's right, that's right. Were you calling me a wimp? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> Here's Gorez up ahead. The ball is laid off and knocked away that time on a fine sliding play from number 20, Portillo for Charleston. Here's Bercoloni. Taking a look now, he goes on the far side. Here's Shinoski. Now to Bercoloni right at midfield, being pestered by Portillo. Now back to Shinoski. You mentioned Martin. What does he bring to this lineup, Mark? Of course, uh, uh, the uh, guy that was brought up from D.C. Did I get the wrong name? I'm sorry. No, it's <laughs> 
<laughs> oh. <laughs> Right. Not only skill, there's a lot of athleticism, and and that's a big part that uh, that Richmond likes to have. They like to run. They like right. to, to get going, and especially here at home. I think uh, having Shinoski, obviously, and Shinoski and Zombie have right. a lot of time together. So when Shinoski was up with with DC, yep. there was a little bit of a, a, a problem in the central respect, just because the players didn't necessarily know each other as well. But with Shinoski and Yambi, I think uh, I think Kalisha was very happy that uh, both those guys are here tonight. Charleston now in possession. The ball is played back. Near the uh, goal area, and it's controlled by Mueller, number four, and he now goes here on the near side. The long ball, Yambi, that ball kind of trickled past him. And there's a shot, and Taylor is able to make the, uh, the save. So right away, Taylor was uh, tested. So Taylor will uh, kick it off here. We understand we're having a little technical problem with Mark Smike. Hopefully we can get that rectified. And the ball is controlled now by Vercoloni. And Vercoloni looking for some help. Comes over here on the near side to Sasha Gorez. And Gorez maneuvers around a couple of players. Drops it off for Vercoloni. He taps it over on the far side. Good quick touch pass into the middle. And Martin now playing it back. And that shot attempt was blocked. Fine play that time from number 14, Van Shake, as he was able to make that block on that shot attempt. And now with Charleston controlling. Ball played to Portillo, number 20, at near midfield. And now the ball is played to Yambi. I think we got Mark back with us. Can you hear me? I can not hear you great, but hey. I've got you, though. Looks like we're both on the same channel here. That's all right. No problem. All right. So here's the ball played. Charleston got a foot on it. Because I'm sure the fans are dying to hear me, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> Cuevas got a uh, foot on it. And now Charleston on the near side. Here's the ball laid off. And they get around George Davis the fourth. Here's the cross into the middle of the box, and it's headed away by Richmond. And Charleston still in possession. And that ball's going to go over the end line for a goal kick. So, Mark, while we were having a little, we got your problem settled. Uh, there was a, uh, Taylor did come up with a big save, a kind of a point blank shot. It wasn't a hard shot, but still he was tested and he came up with the save. So. Well, that's what you need. Like I said, he's a young goalkeeper, not a whole lot of experience, but uh, he's, he's gaining more and more confidence. I'll tell you what, Mike, against Orange County a couple of weeks ago, he had a save and stoppage time that preserved that right, tie. Exactly. If, they had if they had lost that game, I think that would have been a real, real uh, problem for Richmond as far as the psyche is concerned. But that gives Ryan more and more confidence as a young goalkeeper. Battle for that 50-50 ball from... Uh, and now here comes Charleston with it. Asante got a shove in on Cuevas, and the ball went over the sideline to be a throw in for Charleston. So the battery, the fifth seed in these playoffs, and Cuevas is going to leave that for, I believe that's Portillo that's going to throw it in. And that's a matchup I think we should watch tonight. I think Cuevas is going to be matched up with Asante a yeah. lot. I think it's uh, both very smaller but very physical players. That's going to be a good matchup, I think, tonight. Actually, it's Zach Prince with the throw in for Charleston. And that ball skips over the end line for a goal kick. We're scoreless here at Richmond City Stadium. Opening round of the USL Pro Playoffs. Fourth-seeded Richmond entertaining fifth-seeded Charleston. Mike Neville and Mark Bushman along with you. And Charleston now with possession. That's number 25, Wilson, John Wilson, the guy you spoke very highly of. Here's Portillo now on the near side. And a good job of stepping in front to steal that ball was Yambi. And here comes Richmond on the counter. Here's Bercoloni. Lays it off to George Davis, the fourth. To Gorez. Sasha takes a look, now rolls it in that Escaped Bercoloni and Charleston now will try to counter as well. Here's Cuevas. Gets a little drop pass back. Plays it over on the far side. Looking for the cross. Ball put into the box. Bercoloni 
block that crossing attempt. And Richmond, that was number 14. That was Colin Martin we talked about. We're going to try and get Colin several touches early in the game to get him involved. It has been several weeks since he's been right. down here, so sometimes it's a little problem if the guys aren't used to playing together. Gores with a quick ball ahead for George Davis, the fourth. Ball rolled ahead for, I guess, Jaisley, but he wasn't on the move. Now I think he was trying to look for uh, Asante wide, there. Wide, yeah. yeah, that was a good thought from Martin there. Again, that's one of those things I literally just mentioned, Mike. They're not used to playing together, not yeah. used to running off to make the certain runs and stuff, but that will come together pretty quickly, they hope. Here's Cooper, the goalkeeper, playing it off now for Charleston. Ball played on the near side. And here's possession now for 24, Prince. Zach Prince now playing it back to number 11. That is Griffith. Griffin, excuse me, Quentin Griffith. But he gave it away, and now Bercoloni and his pass too strong. goes over the uh, sideline to be a throw in for Charleston, trying to hook up with Alex Lee. I think a little bit of butterflies on, uh, on both teams here. Oh, sure. Starting out. A couple of some errant passes. and Just be smart. Don't make any mistakes for, for either team. Be, just be smart. Don't overcommit. Yeah, usually, Mark, when we have playoff games, it takes about 12, 15, 20 minutes to get really in a rhythm. Like you say, you don't want to make that costly mistake that will cost you right. an early goal, and I think that's what we're seeing, like you say. Ball on the far side. Here's Lee dropping it off to Vercoloni. Vercoloni takes a look. Now to Asante. Samuel Asante keeps it rolling over here on the near side to Sasha Gores. Back to Asante. George Davis the fourth lays it off to Gorez. Back to George Davis the fourth. Good stuff here. Good short passing. And Asante's pass. Trying to hook up with Matthew Hall, but that was read beautifully by the Charleston defense. But a nice little build up there with the short passing game from Richmond. Yeah, that's what they that's what Richmond's been very, very good at. Historically, they've been a very over direct team. Oh. There's a turnover. Here's George Davis the fourth, and we got a whistle. Vercoloni was taken down hard, and they will get a great opportunity here. But Vercoloni, we hope he's all right. He is getting up. That's a good sign. Yeah. Absolutely. When, you're, when your captain gets up pretty yeah. quickly, that's good. Now, this is going to be interesting. It's a good area. The way the ball is, I'd go ahead and take a shot on frame here, Michael, and it's a matter of do, does Gores take this shot? Uh, there are a couple of guys standing over there. They, both, they, can, they, they can all make free kicks. Yeah. We've seen them do that. George Davis the fourth has been very deadly with these free kick opportunities from about this area. And you could go left or right here and still have a good opportunity, Mike. Well, George Davis, the fourth, is standing over the ball. Now he takes a couple of steps back. But Gores is very good, too, as you mentioned, Mark. Let's see if he bends this in with the left foot. He looks like he's going to take it, and he does. And oh, what a save by Cooper. There's a follow-up shot and a goal. Great job of sticking with that after the uh, tremendous save by Cooper. And it's the newcomer, I believe, it's, Colin Martin. It's Colin Martin. I'll tell you what. What a great shot from Garez. Cooper with one of the best saves I've seen in a long time because it deflected off the Charleston player. He was able to get his hand on it, knock it away. They just couldn't clear the ball. Went right to Martin. A lot of calmness right there and composure. Put that in the back of the net. one nothing Richmond. That's a huge goal early for Richmond here in what I believe is the 11th minute. Colin Martin. And Richmond is on top one to nothing. You could not have asked anything more, though, from Cooper on that play. Wow, right. what a, I, yeah. I can't keep get over that. That was a great adjustment there. And he just, you know, like I said, he tried to parry it away the best he could. Martin right there for the rebound. Well, Mark, I know you weren't here for the uh, Orlando game, but that's how Orlando scored. Thanks for reminding me of that, Mike. <laughs> but that's how Orlando scored on rebounds. Balls yeah. that Taylor made the initial stop, but there was no uh, ability or no opportunity to stop the goal. So one nothing. Richmond came right back while I was uh, talking. And now here is Charleston in possession. Got to needle me about that Orlando game, huh, Mike? <laughs> I was just mentioning it. <laughs> here's Portillo now dropping it off to number 11. That's Griffin. Good there. ball there. Yep, here's Griffin. And he stubbed his toe on the uh, cross attempt. And it's a goal kick, much to the dismay of Cuevas. Griffith kind of stumbled trying to make that cross. That was a beautiful ball that was 
push to him, but unfortunately for Charleston, he couldn't make the cross. You know, what we've seen from a lot of Richmond games this year, on both sides of the ball, one team scores, the other yeah. team scores almost immediately. It's happened to Richmond, and then they've done it to teams. So next couple minutes here are going to be very, very interesting to see if they can keep their composure right. and kind of keep Charleston on their heels a little bit. That 50-50 ball up in the air. Isley was battling for it. And now Martin, and now the turnover. Good job of running through that ball that time from number 14, Van Shake for Charleston. And now here's Richmond with Alex Lee. Lee taking a look. He's being watched by number 23, Sanyang. And now Richmond will try to rebuild the offense. Here's Shinovsky. Richmond on top, one nothing. Here's Vercoloni. The ball chested down by Hall, but Charleston comes up with it. Ball played to Portillo. He goes off to number 25. That's Wilson. There's a quick throw in on the restart to Asante. And Gores will track that pass here on the near side. Sasha gets a cross in, and it was easily defended by Charleston. And then Griffith sends it forward. And Yambi, and there's a whistle. He's calling a handball on yeah. Yambi, I believe. Yep. Yambi was in a pretty good battle that time with uh, number nine, Kelly, Dane Kelly. And, of course, we mentioned earlier in the pregame that Kelly, 10 goals to lead the way for Charleston. You want to keep an eye on him. Absolutely. There's the free kick for Cuevas. Cuevas, I believe, had the game-winning goal in their last regular season finale against Harrisburg to make it a 2-1 win. And that ball will... Richmond playing the offside trap there. Good timing. Everybody runs up, leaves a bunch of Charleston guys staying there. Can't Whoops. really do a whole lot. Yep. We haven't seen that a whole lot from Richmond this no. year, run that yeah. kind of trap. Nice. That might be one of the new wrinkles that you might see, you know, during mm -hmm. the regular season. And the... Uh, it, it's hard to try to get new plays involved uh, with the playoffs, but sometimes veteran coaches like Lee Kalashaw is able to find a way to draw the other team off sides, and that's, that's one of those nice uh, luxuries you have. But everybody's got to be on the same page, yeah. Mike, or you're, or you're picking the ball out of your net. That's right. There's the ball played ahead this time to Van Shake, but he lost possession. Here's Lee. And he banged it off of Van Shake. It'll be a throw in for Richmond. Well, I know it's early, Mark, but I think Richmond's played pretty well here in the early going. Of course, they have the one nothing advantage, but I think they've done a nice job of holding possession. Yeah, Taylor making that save early uh, obviously helps a lot, gets him into the game, kind of settles the nerves, I guess, for yep. you know, for Richmond, not that they're not down one nothing. They've gone down one nothing early a couple of games, unfortunately. So instead of a throw in, it's going to be a free kick. Foul was whistled against Charleston. Here's Shinovsky. Drives it in. Looking for Yisley. It's punched away by Cooper. Here's Hall with a shot just wide. Wow, what, another good play from Martin to just kind of set that up. Yep. Cooper made a nice save, but he was well off his line trying to scramble to get back in goal, and that shot from Hall. Yeah, very aggressive in coming out, but he got caught in no man's right. land there. And that did not miss by a whole lot, Mike. Cooper now with the goal kick. That would have been huge if Richmond could have grabbed this early 2-0 advantage. As it is, they have the 1-0 lead. Ball played near midfield. Settled down now. And played back to Cooper in goal. Didn't get a lot on that clearing attempt, and it's going to go over the end line for a throw in. Well, that's good, though, from Asante. Forced the error there. Here's Gorez playing it back to Taylor in goal. Again, Richmond in the red jerseys and the uh, red shorts and the red socks. Charleston in the uh, black and yellow jerseys and the black shorts. Here's Asante. Off to Gores. Here's Bercoloni. To Shinovsky. Back to Luke. And he'll drop it off to Shinovsky at midfield. And here's Vercoloni. Charleston really playing deep. It's only got uh, one guy up. They're playing 10 behind the ball. Here's Asante. Drops it off to Gores. 
And Sasha puts it into the box. Hall battling for that 50-50 ball, and it's flicked away by Charleston, settled by George Davis IV for Richmond. Off to Shinovsky. Here's George Davis IV. Rolls it over on the far side. Now it's tapped back to Shinovsky. He's getting, getting some pressure from Kelly. Good ball there. Yep. Here's Vercoloni. Looking on the near side to, Shina to uh, Gores. Samuel Asante. We've said many times, uh, Asante, one of the unsung heroes in that midfield area this season for Richmond. Here's Vercoloni to Martin. That's Martin. a good ball. Here's a quick cross into the middle, and it's cleared away by Charleston. Great ball. Boy, Martin really does make a difference, doesn't he, Mark? He really he's, does. He's got had great, several he's got, great plays. He's got great field vision. He's finding the guys. The guys are making the right runs. Here's Jambi. Playing it ahead now to Vercoloni. The winner of this game will play uh, the Orlando Harrisburg winner, I believe. That is correct. Orlando City is the uh, number one seed. Orlando wins. That's a road trip, Mike. Let's go. <laughs> Provided our... Richmond wins. I'm right. sorry, folks. Yeah, let's not jump Charleston in. could just as easily win this game. This ball played back now to Vercoloni. Good ball as he finds George Davis the fourth. Tried to nudge a pass over, but was knocked away. And now Alex Lee will settle it. Lee with a strong cross, and Yisley can't catch up with that. It'll go over the end line for a goal kick for Charleston. Opening round of the USL Pro Playoffs. Four really good matchups, I think, with uh, you know Orlando and Harrisburg City. You've got Sacramento, who I think is playing yeah. as good as not anybody anybody else in the league, playing uh, Wilmington, another very strong team, and yep. uh, LA Galaxy 2 against Rochester. Rochester's a storied franchise making the trip out to L.A. So I think four, four very good games tonight, Mike. If you're uh, sitting at home watching YouTube, you've got access to a lot of good yes. soccer tonight. Yes, indeed. And we've got a good one here with Richmond on top early, one nothing. As that ball skips over the sideline, throw in for Richmond, and Gorez will take it. Sasha Gorez, the veteran defender. Oh, I thought that was a handball. No call. I thought that it went off of Prince's hand, but the center referee said no. Throw in for Richmond. I think Kyler Martin needs a new hoof. I think he can. He does. <laughs> he needs got to go to the blacksmith and get a new shoe. So throw in for George Davis, the fourth. And Gore is... Hits one. Asante heads it back to Shinovsky. Getting a little pressure, and he'll just drop it back in goal to Taylor. And Ryan Taylor hits it near midfield. Here's George Davis, the fourth. A little stop and go move. Davis, beautiful ball rolled, and Hall will try to catch up with it. Well defended that time. Well done by Mueller. Good composure by the uh, defender for Charleston. On the far side, it is Charleston in possession. And now the ball is played to Cuevas. He tried to hook up with Portillo, who did a nice job of keeping that ball in play for Charleston. And Portillo sends it over to Mueller. And here's Griffith. And his pass was blocked out of play by Davis. George Davis the fourth. Quick restart for Charleston. Here's Kelly. Kelly working against Asante. There's Portillo. Getting near that box. Uh, the 18-yard box. But again, Richmond doing a nice job of turning them back towards midfield. And still with it, I'd opportunity, there's a shot, and Taylor had to come up big again for Richmond off that shot from number 24, Zach Prince. Here's Griffith, and Prince turns it, and now trying to settle it is Griffith. And Yambi just taps it forward. And here's Martin. Martin battling Griffith, and Griffith 
is able to maintain possession. Ball just teetered on the line. And we have a whistle and a foul. So Ryan Taylor, big stop on that blast from Prince. That's a good ball. Ball's dangerous. Ooh! And Dane Kelly just nudged that one over the crossbar. And he's ball. really mad at himself. Yeah. He should have done a lot better with that. And he's calling a corner on that. Wow. I mean, even Dan Kelly wasn't even asking right. for the corner. Exactly. Sasha Gores, who's very, usually very calm. You don't see him get too upset, but he's not happy about this decision. Yeah, Dane Kelly was in. Taylor did a good job of coming out, and Kelly, from our vantage point, right. Kelly hit it, yep. skied it over the bar, and was, he, was, he was disgusted with himself for not doing better. So, But another good opportunity for Charleston. Yep. Cuevos will take, Cuevos will take this uh, corner kick for Charleston. So Cuevas, number seven, ready to hit this corner kick. Ball in the air, and it is Yisley getting ahead on it. Tracking it down, trying to keep it in play. That's Ferguson, Sean Ferguson. And that cross attempt's knocked away by Richmond. That was good pressure from Charleston, though, yeah. on that sequence. That's the best they've had of the game. Ball played forward by Charleston. Asante and Kelly doing battle. And Kelly drops it off to Cuevas. Cuevas watched by George Davis the fourth. And here is number 14, Van Shake. We got a whistle and we got a player down. It's a Richmond player. It looks like Asante. Asante. Yeah. yeah, it looks like it. So Samuel Asante is down. Hey, fans, don't forget, you can get scores, stats, all kinds of news from USL Soccer, and much more. Just log on to uslprosoccer.com. Once again, that's uslsoccer.com for all the latest scores, stats, news, whatever you're trying to find with regard to USL Pro Soccer, you'll find it at uslsoccer.com. Mike Neville, Mark Bushman along with you. Richmond, Virginia, City Stadium. The Richmond kickers on a 1-0 advantage on the goal from Colin Martin in the 11th minute. And Asante still down. Like I said, he's been an unsung hero for the kickers this season yeah. in that midfield. I think he's mad. He took, uh, he's saying that Dane Kelly hit him with, a, with an elbow. Yeah. That was just a good... Good hard play from both teams. Yep. Kelly did a great job of shielding the ball and holding holding players off. It's one of the things he does very well. He was talking to the center referee, Charles Carson. So we'll have a drop ball here. And it's like George Davis the fourth will take it. No, no. And he just plays it forward to Griffith. And the ball possessed now by Sean Ferguson back to Griffith. And Griffith will Tap it back to number four, Mueller. Over to Ferguson as Charleston knocking around on their side of the uh, midfield. And here's Portillo. Griffith to Van Shake. That ball got through to Kelly. And the battle as Jaisley came up with it and he's whistled for a little bit over aggressiveness. Battling with San Yang on that one. <laughs> I've seen that called. I've seen that not called. Exactly. And unfortunately for Richmond, in this instance, it was called. Pretty physical game so far. Yeah. Not a lot of fouls, a lot of jostling, and a lot of shirt grabbing and stuff. What you would expect in a, not only in a regular game between right. Richmond and Charleston, but a playoff game. Exactly. Oh, that's a great ball again. Martin playing a ball ahead for Hall. And Hall was run off the ball that time by the veteran John Wilson. That was well defended by Wilson. That really was another great ball from Colin Martin. Here comes Charleston now back with Griffith on the near side. Hall beats almost anybody else on that, uh, on that sprint, but John Wilson showing he's still got the legs to do it. And that cross defl uh, deflected off a of Richmond player right to Taylor and and Taylor will punt it away for the kickers. One-nothing advantage for the kickers. 
early in a very entertaining contest, I think, so far. Absolutely. There's Shinovsky. Driving one for Hall. Matthew Hall being watched by Ferguson. Hall crossed in the middle and it's knocked away that time by Mueller. And now here's Wilson. Wilson off to number 23, San Yang. And here is Prince. Portillo gets the return pass for Charleston. There's Ferguson and Van Shake. Watched by Colin Martin. Ball played over here on the near side. Mueller rolls it ahead. Good job of keeping that ball in play that time. But the turnover, here's Yisley. Off to Martin. Good drop off to Gorez. Here's Vercoloni. Nice movement. Yep. Kind of pinched in there, and they opened up this field a little bit. And Mark, they did it with those one touches. They're not, yep. they're not playing around with it. They're yep. just quickly just touching it over to a teammate. Here is Vercoloni. Quickest way to break down a compact defense. Yep, exactly. Here's Asante playing it to Sasha Gorez. Here's Martin. He lost possession. And now the ball is played to Prince. Prince to Cuevas. And Sante pounced on him immediately, forcing him to give that ball up. Oh, Dane Kelly, Kelly again. Yep. Yeah. Dane Kelly working against Yambi's defense. Stops just outside the box. Ball poked away. Kelly with some pretty good strength to hold on to that ball, but then George Davis the fourth. Good job of coming back and helping out the defense. Yeah, Kelly's playing really well, but it only when you're going up against one and three and one yeah. V four, you're not going to do but so much. There's George Davis the fourth off to Vercoloni. He spins near midfield with the ball. Off to Gorez. Here's Martin. Taking a look. Dropping it in. It's knocked away by Ferguson with the header. And here's Van Shake. One nothing Richmond on top. It's the opening round of the USL. Playoffs. And the fourth seeded kickers and the fifth seeded Charleston battery. Mike Neville and Mark Bushman along with you. Charleston on the move. Here's Cuevas. And that ball is good job by Griffith, the hustle to just tap it ahead to Van Shake. And there's a uh, shot wide. Excuse me, that was Zach Prince, number 24. The comprehensive testing lab based in Richmond. I think what's helped Charles in the last few minutes is that John Wilson is making runs from out of the back like he, like he normally does. He didn't do that the first 20 minutes or so. Uh, I think that's because they were kind of pinned back a little bit. He's found himself with a little bit more real estate. He's making those runs, and he's drawn the defenders to him, opening up some spots for Charleston. That's what they really need to do. They need to get their outside backs coming up more in the attack, and John Wilson's as good as anybody doing that. Yeah, he is certainly uh, much like Yambi. He can cover a lot of ground, and... Uh, of course, Yambi, they utilize mostly on corner kicks, but there's the ball drop back, and do we get a whistle? Yes, we do. Nicely went down, and he was tugged down. So Richmond with a free kick opportunity. Lee Kalashaw strolling in front of the uh, Richmond bench. Here's George Davis, the fourth. Gorez with some time. And that ball's knocked away by Charleston. Yambi backtracking, now just drops it off to Shinovsky. I like the way you look like an air traffic controller when you're trying to <laughs> direct the ball. <laughs> hey, listen, I know where every ball should go. Whether <laughs> or not right. they listen to me is another story. You're the Monday morning quarterback, That's right? That's right. Here's Yambi. I needed that after my fantasy loss last week. <laughs> Here's Gorez. Taylor out of the box. Janowski tapping it to Asante gets the return pass. One nothing Richmond on top. Winding down this first half here in Richmond, Virginia at City Stadium. And a whistle. Offside there on Yisley. So Charleston will have the free kick opportunity with Griffith. And that ball 
Gora is looking for a foul, none called against Dane Kelly. And now Yambi is able to push it back to Taylor. And say Kelly's done a really, really good job of winning those balls and able to hold on to them. He's, like I said, he's just, he's just not getting enough support just right. yet. Ooh, boy. Ooh, it's nice ball, and Taylor came out, dropped it. A big, big anticipation from Ryan Taylor there. He jumped yeah. off his line really quick. If he hesitates for even half a second, he's in there on goal, and it's one-to-one. -one. That challenge was made from Van Shake. And Dane Kelly was also lurking the 10-goal the, uh, ten scorer for Charleston and Yisley. Couldn't control, but now Asante does. Uh, Samuel Asante, he lost possession. And Gorez collided, still playing on. Here's Martin. And the ball, just his first touch eluded him. And now Cuevas. George Davis, the fourth, locked that pass attempt. Getting a little chippy out there. Yeah. And we've got, I think it's George Davis, the fourth down. Yeah. A lot of collisions going on there yeah. out there. Just guys just giving it their all 100% going into tackles. And yeah, Davis, uh, actually, I think he slid down, Mark, to, to uh, try to uh, disrupt a pass. And I'm not sure uh, if he got clipped or not. George uh, Do Davis, the fourth, still down. The uh, kickers can ill afford to lose him this early in the contest. He has joined Matthew Delicott in double figure scoring with 11. During that break, I saw Cuevas go over to uh, Dane Kelly, and they chatted for just a second. So uh, Kelly's, really, like I said, he's done a great job of holding the ball up. Cuevas we haven't seen as much of. We need Cuevas to get a little bit more involved in the attack to help them out. So I think they're probably talking about, what do you need me to do? What can I do? What can you do? Because uh, when they're clicking, they're as good as anybody right. else around. And like I said, Kelly's had a very strong first half. He's giving both Shinoski and Yambi a heck of a time. Very strong. He's a little, you know, he looks like a little guy, but uh, he's got some strength to him. He's been able to hold off a lot of 50-50 challenges. There's the ball pounded forward. And Ferguson was able to head it away from Yisley. Controlled by Van Shake. And Van Shake now rolls it over to Griffith. Now off to Zach Prince. And a whistle and a foul. So Griffith will take this free kick opportunity near midfield for Charleston. Ball played into the box. And Mueller couldn't settle that down. Goal kick for Richmond. Cuevas wasn't really happy on that. The, uh, on the free kick, he kind of trailed in behind on the right-hand side. There wasn't a kicker within 20 yards of him. They just didn't look his way. I think that's some, some of the problem that you have, and, and all the teams are guilty of it. They're in such a rush to take the free kick yeah. and just get it back yeah. into play. Sometimes they don't see what might be opening up. Yeah, we've discussed that many times on the telecast, Mark, about, uh, you know, you really, if you just take another extra two or three seconds to get settled, things may open yeah. up. Here's Alex Lee to Vercoloni. Richmond on top, 1-0. Colin Martin with the only goal so far. It came early, the 11th minute. It was Gorez. Vercoloni, nice ball here on the near side. Asante rolls it. Here's Martin into the box. And a follow-up shot, ooh! George Davis, the fourth, wants that one back. He sure does, I tell you what, he got a little, you know, you see your eyes, when you get a ball like that, your eyes get as big as your head. Yep. And uh, he got a little too excited and put that over the top. That was, uh, that was a two-nothing game right yep. there. And Another, again, Colin Martin involved in exactly, that. Exactly, exactly. Great play on the sideline there. Asante lays it off for Martin. Sends a good cross in. Another uh, clearance from Charleston. Doesn't go quite out. Now the ball is played near midfield with the kickers in possession. Rolled back to Yambi. Ball played over to Gorez. Here's George Davis, the fourth. Good ball as he keeps it moving, but it's good anticipation by Charleston. Here's Gorez taking a look. Griffith got a foot on that for Charleston. Here's Asante. Off to Vercoloni. Alex Lee patiently waiting on the far side has it. Lee is able to 
get free. Good ball, here's George Davis, the fourth, just outside the box, no foul. Center referee says, let's play on, and they, we do. Here's Dane Kelly. And a good job again by Asante, coming back from his midfield position to help out defensively, yeah. and that created the turnover. Yeah, good good with the track back there, because Cuevas was coming in, and yeah. Dane, Kelly saw him, just couldn't hit him enough in stride. Here's Lee, playing it forward. Hall dropping it now to Vercoloni. Vercoloni takes a look. Here's Gores, and he couldn't quite settle it as uh, the ball fell off his foot right to a Charleston, right to Griffith for Charleston. Now the ball played by Charleston in possession. Here's Ferguson. And Ferguson. Hooks up with Zach Prince. And well read by Gorez, the veteran. Here's George Davis, the fourth. He's kind of hemmed in here on the sideline. And Gorez with a beautiful little fake. Yeah, good possession there. Yep. It's about the second or third time, Mark. Yep. We've seen him kind of hemmed in on the sidelines, but a good composure. And again, the quick one-touch passing gets them out of that situation. Here's Shinoski, playing the ball ahead for Yisley, battling with Ferguson. Ferguson fell down, got back up, and then drives it near midfield. Yambi battling Dane Kelly. Kelly comes up with the loose ball. Off to Portillo. Trying to loft one and it's going to slide over the end line for a goal kick. Okay. So Taylor will take the goal kick for Richmond. With the nothing, one nothing advantage here as we're winding down this first half. Probably have at least two minutes of stoppage time, if not more. Here's Taylor with a goal kick. Portillo got a head on it. Here's Cuevas. And now the ball played wide. Here's Wilson. There he is moving up, Mark, like you said yep. earlier. Yep. Wilson still in possession, drops it off. And Portillo putting it in. Kelly might have. Oh, that's a terrific save by Taylor. Kelly just got a head on that, and uh, Taylor. Had to make the diving. Deceptive ball there. Yeah. What a great play in there. Uh, good reaction from Ryan Taylor because when Kelly hit that, I just figured it was going to go a couple yards wide. Obviously, Taylor had to get that, or that's right. in the back of the net. Yep. Good reaction. He's had a couple. He's had three really good reaction saves so far. So, again, a young goalkeeper. His confidence is building. You can see it, Mike. Here's Cuevas with the corner kick. And it's down in the box. Kelly gets a shot, and... Now did that deflect? Uh, nope, they're going to say it's a goal kick. I got to tell you, Mike, as a, as a soccer fan, I love the pace of this game oh, right I now. This is a really, really good soccer game between two evenly matched teams. Both teams are doing a really good job yep. of possessing yep. and trying to create some scoring yep. opportunities. Like I said, I, I like the pace of the game. I thought it was a little slow at first. Right. Everybody's kind of knocking you know, knocking it around, don't want to make any errors. Richmond yep. got the, uh, the early goal, but since then, I mean, it's been 50-50. It's really good chances on both sides. Hey, fans, don't forget, visit USL Facebook. Uh, that's where you can uh, get all of your information. USLFacebook.com or Facebook.com slash USL Pro. And make sure you visit that USL Pro fan page. And the Stand Up for Richmond chance going up, getting the entire crowd to stand up and start cheering this team. Here's Kelly. He's been very active. He's had a lot of touches tonight. There's Wilson if he can save it. And I think he did. And Gorez. Heads it back to his goalkeeper. <laughs> Taylor gets that out quickly. Oh, what! It's a great tackle there. Yeah, that was a fine play by Portillo. Portillo. Yeah, into the middle. Cuevas couldn't quite settle it. It went off his foot right to Taylor. Charleston is knocking on the door right now. Yeah, they the last uh, about the last six seven minutes, Mark. They picked up yep. their offensive uh, force and have been a, 
As you mentioned, they've come close a couple of times. Taylor had a good idea there to try and get the ball out to Martin so they could get a quick counter, but Portillo read that perfectly, was in there to get the, get the ball on a the tackle there. Here's a turnover. Bercoloni settles it to Alex Lee. And Lee will play it back to Taylor. Ball flipped right to Hall. Off to, uh, he tried to hook up with George Davis the fourth. And here's Gores to Asante. He avoids a, literally, a tackle <laughs> from the Charleston player. Here's Shinowski to lean out of Vercoloni. Nice, oh, that's a nice job by Martin. Here's Lee, Martin on the overlap. Here's Vercoloni thinking about taking one now to Martin. Martin just inside the box, now outside and and hook up with Hall on the near side. He will control it. Nice play from Hall there. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's one of the few times this game that Alex Lee's been able to make a run out of the back. We right. talk about John Wilson making it. Alex Lee's great at that, too. Hasn't been able to do that. And I think part of that is because John Wilson keeps making runs up. Oh, beautiful pass to Doris Davis, the fourth. His shot blocked, though. That was a beautiful pass from Matthew Hall. And good hustle by Asante. Cuevas is not happy. Here's Wilson off to Portillo. Portillo near midfield. Off to Sanyang. And here's Zach Prince. Got an overlap with Griffith. Flicks it in, but well read by Asante. Kelly tries to control. And we got a whistle, and the foul is against Kelly as he collided with, I believe, Vercoloni. Vercoloni wants the number of the truck that just hit him. <laughs> so Taylor will take this free kick. one nothing Richmond on the goal from Colin Martin in the 11th minute. And Griffith lets that go over the sideline, throw in for the battery. Well, it's funny, Mark, as the season progressed and we were wondering about Charleston, usually a uh, perennial playoff contender. They were struggling early, but, boy, right after that uh, dismantling by Richmond, they put together a nice little streak to end the season, 7-1-3. Yeah, and three. They sure did. That's, they were near the languishing near the bottom around yeah. right around that yeah. time. And several of us thought that, uh, you know, one of the most storied teams in the, in the history of the league was not going to make the playoffs, would be shocking. But they rallied the troops and, you know, a couple teams, Wilmington, came around and Sacramento did what you know what they did so there's a couple teams that are in good form right now Charleston being as good as anybody else I think Charleston Rochester and Wilmington were uh yeah the, the three teams that I would mark as far because midway through the season they were like you said dead to rights as yeah. far as the standings go yep. got two minutes of stoppage time here's Shinowski trying to chip it over the defender's head and Kelly knocks it away here's Shinowski now heading it over to Alex Lee Lee couldn't hook up with Yisley. Nice play by George Davis, the fourth, but then Charleston regains possession. Here's Cuevas looking for some help, and he finds it in the form of Quentin Griffith. Prince drops it back to Griffith. <laughs> <laughs> Kyle and Martin just wanted to see if the bench was awake on the Charleston <laughs> side. Pretty, pretty heady stuff. You know, one or two of them actually fived him. Yeah. Here's Cuevas. Just outside the box, knocked away. Here's Van Shake off to Portillo. Here's Griffith. And Prince gets a return pass from Cuevas. Here's Cuevas trying to run onto that ball. Went down, no call. There was contact down there, Mike. Yeah. But I think the ball was pretty much out of play. The Charleston fan base, which has made the trip up here to Richmond, is uh, not happy about that call, or non-call, I should say. Got the big banner down there. Yep. Charleston with a great fan support, one of the best stadiums in the league. It has a pub. How can you not like a stadium <laughs> that has a pub, Mike? Yeah, this is a great rivalry between these two. These are two teams that they've been in, in this rodeo once or twice. 
George they, Davis the fourth. A few years back, they actually played for the uh, yeah. USL title. Charleston went in at, at home. And that ball will skip to Cooper in goal. He will settle it. And there's the whistle to bring an end to the first half. A very entertaining first half. So Richmond will go into the uh, break with the 1-0 advantage. I thought in the early going, Richmond had most of the possession, and, of course, they wound up getting the goal. But as that uh, half continued, Mark, I thought in the last 10 or 15 minutes, Charleston was the one who was on the offensive attack. Yeah, I think so. I think, the uh, like I said, it was very, very even matchup for the most part. So Richmond had the play early. Charleston had it, like you said, for the last 15 minutes or so. Very, very fast-paced game. Very exciting. And uh, I can't wait for the second half to get started. These guys need to go and catch a breath and exactly. keep going. We're going to take a break. We'll come back. We'll have more of the USL Pro Playoffs. It is the opening round from City Stadium in Richmond, Virginia. Richmond with a 1-0 advantage. You're watching Richmond Kickers Soccer on YouTube. marketing partner to learn more about all the sponsors for the kickers log on to the club's website at www.richmondkickers.com we would also like to thank the official apparel provider adidas a sponsor of the richmond kickers be sure to grab your official kickers merchandise online or right here at city stadium on game days one nothing richmond with the advantage we'll take a break we'll come back get you ready for the second half of tonight's playoff matchup between the richmond kickers and the charleston battery you're watching richmond kickers soccer on youtube
There you go. And welcome back, City Stadium, Richmond, Virginia. It's the opening round of the USL playoffs, and Richmond owns a one nothing advantage over the Charleston Battery. Mike Neville and Mark Bushman along with you. Let's take a look at that uh, goal. It came off a free kick, Mark, which uh, Sasha took. Uh, Sasha Gores took the free kick. Cooper made an unbelievable save for Charleston, but the Battery couldn't clear it. Colin Martin pounced on it and was able to knock it in the back of the net. Absolutely. When you look at the free kick, it, it deflects off, I believe, it was a Charleston defender, and Cooper was going the wrong way. Somehow still had that big frame, was able to sm smack it away with that huge hand. Uh, they just weren't able to clear it, and, and Colin Martin with great composure. That's what a professional does. you got to rebound and open net you yep. slot it home which is what he did and Colin Martin was very active for Richmond in that opening half with uh, some very deft passing and of course he also had the goal and uh, Charleston a very, very evenly played first half like we said in the early going we thought Richmond had the advantage and then uh, about midway to the latter stages of that first half Charleston came on and uh, made some threatening uh, moves offensively as well so uh, I'm looking for a very exciting second half yeah it was five shots uh, for Charleston four shots for Richmond all five of Charleston's shots were on goal so Ryan Taylor had to come up with the saves there had some very very good saves and you know coming into this game Mike one of the things we talked about was he's a young keeper and doesn't have a whole lot of experience uh He's been up to the task so far, right. absolutely. And what, I think one of the things that I, I touched on this briefly, one of the things that did happen in the first half is that once Charleston was able to get John Wilson making some of those right. runs out of the back, same thing with Griffith on the right side. It kind of pinned the kickers back a little bit because normally Garez and right. Alex Lee – tend to dictate that to the other team. Lee, we didn't see a whole lot of in the first half. You're afraid of getting caught on the counter right. if you're up too far. I think one of the things that Richmond needs to do is try to get that ball wide, push those guys further up. That'll keep Griffith and Wilson back a little bit, not let them push up into the attack, looking for Dane Kelly and, and uh, Cuevas. One thing I'm sure that Lee's going to emphasize to his team is, you know, let's not just sit on our laurels and think this thing is over because if you do that, you do get into that prevent defense. They always say that prevents a victory, and, uh, you know, I would expect Richmond to continue to try to get their attacks, their counterattacks, and try to still uh, add a goal or two to make sure they can salt this thing away. Yeah, you know, I, I think that's, you know, Richmond's nature is to push forward. I don't think Lee likes right. to just sit back there, so I, I think it's still going to be a very, it was a very wide open first half. I think it's going to be a very wide open second half between two teams that are fairly evenly matched, and like I said, I love the pace of this game. I I had a great first half. Yeah, I had a good yeah, time watching yeah. this thing. I hope everybody at home is watching this and, and enjoying it just as well, because we got 45 minutes Maybe more. Maybe more. That's right. Exactly. But uh, the uh, kicker's own the one nothing advantage on the goal from Colin Martin in the 11th minute as he gave Richmond the one nothing lead. And I thought that was important, too, for the kickers, Mark. Uh, we talked about they were kind of stumbling down the uh, home stretch here to end the regular season. I think getting an early goal and getting that lead really is uh, – that was good medicine for them. Yeah, absolutely. You get the confidence going. Like I said, the confidence for Taylor making the big saves. You know, you've got the veteran leadership there with Yambi and, and uh, Vercoloni there and Guerra is all playing good. very well. Alex Lee with his, uh, with his MLS – experience there so you know I think Richmond's got the, ex the experience like I said getting that goal gets their confidence going a little bit and uh, you know like I said Colin Martin wow what an addition we haven't seen him right. in Richmond in quite some time so when I got worried yesterday that those two were coming down yeah. I said Martin's really a good uh, a good player to bring down and it's a shame that uh, Kyle Porter's not up here because those two would make a lethal pair. Uh, <laughs> Kyle, of course, is with D.C. United yep. and has played uh, with uh, D.C. United. I saw the last game they had against New York. He was uh, in the end for some action for a D.C. United. Yeah, D.C.'s not playing too bad, are they? No, not, not bad at all. <laughs> not bad at all. What a turnaround that team has made. <sighs> Unbelievable. Yeah, you know, Benny Olsen deserves yeah. a lot of that credit. They've done a great job. So we're ready to get the second half rolling. Charleston will kick off to start the second half. Again, Dane Kelly, their leading scorer, was very active as well, Mark, and uh, uh, that's something that uh, we want to watch. But again, like you said, Kelly was going uh, against uh, two, three, four defenders at a time. Didn't get a lot of help mm -mm. from Quavers or anybody else Absolutely. Uh, on that uh, forward line or the midfield for Charleston in that opening half. We'll see if that changes here in the second half. Here's Portillo now laying it off to Griffith. No changes, no substitutions to my knowledge. That ball is played long for Kelly, and it's just going to roll over the sideline for a throw in for Richmond. Mike Neville, Mark Bushman along with you. Hope you're enjoying our coverage of the USL Pro Playoffs. Opening round, the winner will take on the winner of the Harrisburg and Orlando matchup. I don't think we have a score on that. I don't know. I'll see what I can find. Work on that, will you? <laughs> You're the, you're the research department. You work on that. Other duties as assigned. Patrick Wood, if you're listening, send us that. <laughs> send us a game. <laughs> All right, the ball knocked around, and Vercoloni is able to nudge it over to Alex Lee. 
Lee here on the near side. Beautiful night for soccer, nice and cool, and uh, the rain, knock on wood, has uh, stayed away. And here is Cuevas now playing it off to Zach Prince. Prince looking for an opening. Good ball as he finds Van Shake. And Van Shake now will play it off. And here's San Yang, and now off on the far side to Griffith. Griffith trying to work on George Davis the fourth. Puts it into the middle, he finds Prince. He tried to nudge a pass forward, it's loose in the box. Here's Cuevas, and Prince gets a uh, shot away. It sailed wide. Didn't have a lot of mustard on that shot. No, uh, Richmond looked, looked a little flat on that. He just yeah. kind of teed up from about 20 yards out. Nobody got to him and closed him down. Yeah, nobody was marking him, and uh, <laughs> he almost put that thing. Hey, listen, you asked for it, you got it. We got 0-0 Orlando and Harrisburg City in the 38th minute. Wow. So I had the application on my phone, didn't realize it. Hey, right. Pat Wood put it on there. Thanks, yeah. Pat. Uh, and we talked about that coming up here, Mark, about uh, that matchup. You know, when they played at Harrisburg uh, a few weeks ago, Harrisburg won. Yes, they so, did. So, I mean, that's not an easy uh, – don't, don't think that's an easy win for Orlando, folks. Hey, you're in the playoffs. One and done, anything can yeah. happen. Look at Richmond and Charlotte last year. Exactly. Richmond easily the number one seed and got beat at home against a very uh, solid Charlotte team. So, that was that's why we love the playoffs there, yeah. Mike. That was the semifinals, and Charlotte came into that as the fifth seed. And then, like you mentioned, Mark, uh, Richmond was the uh, top seed. And, uh, in fact, I think that was their only loss on the season at home, if I'm not mistaken. That is correct. They've only lost once this season here at City Stadium. It's been a – you talk about friendly confines. This has been very friendly for Richmond. Here's Portillo now for Charleston. Down one nothing With possession near midfield. San Yang now rolls it over to Ferguson. Ferguson off to uh, Van Shake. He rolls a good ball through. Here is a shot, and that sailed over the crossbar from, I believe, Kelly. Yeah. Good combination, though, from Cuevas and Kelly. That's what we were looking for in the first half. And uh, John Wilson, again, moving up. He was in the uh, Richmond's third of the field. They're pushing up. What Richmond needs to do, again, keep their composure, keep their numbers, get the marking straight, try to catch them on a counter because the, obviously as the game goes further and further, Charleston's going to have to put more guys into the attack to get the yeah. goal. That's when you get somebody like a, an Asante or a Hall or somebody, maybe you can get them in behind the defense right. and get that counterattack and goal and get, get the second one. Richmond looks a little flat, now, but again, it, it may be just, might be just Charleston raising their intensity. I'm not sure. Here's Jaisley. And George Davis, the fourth, loses possession. And Cuevas can't keep it in play, and he's upset with himself. It was a nice little battle there with Jaisley fighting through the fouls there. About seven divots that are in that area now. <laughs> so throw in for Richmond. George Davis, the fourth, goes back to Sasha Gorez. And he'll play it back to Yambi. Second half underway, Richmond on top, one nothing. Here's Taylor. Ball possessed in midfield by Asante. Quickly closed in on him. And here's Charleston now. It's dangerous losing the ball in the middle third of the field there. Asante battles back. Oh, great hustle from Asante there. And he gets the counterattack going for Richmond. And hook up with the Isley. That ball is going to stay in play. Griffith will have to track it down for Charleston. Yambi, good aggressive play there to keep the ball in the Charleston end of the field. Now the ball played wide. There's a cross for Cuevas. Here's Cuevas. Just outside the box. And good defensive play that time by Alex Lee. Here's Asante now. I think Cuevas could have, probably should have teed that up there. Got a, little, he, got a little fancy. Yeah, I thought he was going to. Here's Hall. Good job of getting away from his defender. Here's the overlap for Alex Lee. That's what they were looking for. Lee will settle. Good cross into the box. It's flicked away, though, by Charleston. Hey, fans, don't forget uh, USL Twitter at USL Pro on Twitter for all the latest updates with USL Pro Soccer. Once again, that's USL Pro on Twitter for all the latest updates. Make sure you check it out. There's the ball played back as Richmond is in possession. 
Here's Bercoloni. Here's Yisley making a run. Yisley got a mm. shot away. Ferguson was step for step with him, but Yisley did a nice job, Mark, getting a shot away. Yeah, he got good position on the defender. There was a good ball there. He was able to get in, just hit it just a little bit over the bar. So That's the most dangerous Yisley's looked so far. Yep. Goal kick for Charleston. Great. Uh, Yisley's one of those good success stories. He was out yeah. for a good chunk of the past year with a concussion. He comes back and uh, gets his confidence back, gets a couple of big goals for Richmond. So. Now, Mark, we always hear about uh, basketball teams, you know, when they get in the playoffs, they kind of shorten their bench and so forth. Do you expect uh, both these coaches to use their, their usual regular season uh, substitution pattern? I honestly have no idea, Mike. <laughs> I knew I was going to why. <laughs> that's why they have me, to give that great insight and analysis. That's why, that you broadcasting know. school helps. Yeah. <laughs> no, Richmond's got a deep bench. I mean, Stephen Basso, Hugh Roberts, Nate Robinson, Matt Delicott. You know, Nate Robinson, uh, you know, he's still um, – not gotten back to that rookie of the year form from last year, but somebody that coming off the bench, any team would like to have that. Same with Delhi. So when Lee does make substitutions, I think they are going to help Richmond. I don't necessarily think there's going to be a drop-off in form at all. So here's Portillo playing it forward now to Van Shake. Well, we do know that uh, Charleston has one of their top scorers. He'll be coming off the bench probably. Yeah. Uh, and that is uh, Cordovez. Again, that's some. That's nice to, to have that off the bench as yeah. well. Ferguson rolling a pass now to Van Shake. Oh, good job by Yisley. Boy, they really do a nice job. Uh, the forwards in the midfield help coming back and helping out the uh, defenders. There's a whistle, and Yisley's not too happy with that foul. Yisley needs to walk away from that. That was not a smart move to go back. The referee called the foul. He's going to take advantage of that. Yep. Yeah. Portillo was the one that was uh, involved in that. Definitely don't need a don't need a silly red uh, yellow card at this stage. Yeah, Justin Portillo was the one involved in that. That's who Yisley went back after. Which it was a foul, but I'm not sure if it was that hard of a foul. But maybe I, obviously I wasn't. He is the one talking. Taken down. The referee is talking to Portillo after that. And I don't believe we've seen yellow no. so far. I don't think we've seen any plastic tonight. Nope. Meanwhile, you know, the uh, Charleston coach is off the bench. He just wants to get his. It's kind of like uh, being at a trial. One lawyer <laughs> wants to get his say in. The other lawyer wants to get his say in. Yeah, I don't think we'll uh, go the entire game without seeing some kind of plastic, Mike. Ball in the box, and Cooper is able to reel that in for Charleston. And Cooper now in possession. And battle for that 50-50 ball. And Kelly with another solid run yep. there. I believe he's earned a corner off this. Yes, he has. Boy, Mark, you look at the scoring differential. Richmond ended up the regular season with 53 goals compared to just 36 for Charleston. Yeah. Really quite a disparity there in the goal scoring. And Richmond uh, yielded just 28 goals compared to 31 for Charleston. But again, to, we were talking also on the way up, really the soccer gods in the early portion of the season <laughs> shined on Richmond because they finished a lot of great opportunities that they couldn't finish in the tail end of the season. That ball's down and cleared away that time by Vercoloni. And somebody's down for Richmond in the box. They need to clear this, get this into no man's land. And now we get a whistle. Is that Matthew Hall? Yeah it's, yeah, it's Hall. Or George There's Davis the fourth. A lot of bodies in there. I believe that's Hall. A lot of bodies cr uh, colliding on that. I don't know who got that for Charleston, but that was going in. Taylor was beat. Luke, Luke Vercoloni was right on the there line. There you go. There's that veteran leadership and discipline. Uh, you know, it's, it's easy. A lot of times when that ball is played, a lot of these guys stray off the post right. or off the line. That's where you see some goals coming from. But good discipline there. Clear that off the line. Keep this one nothing, Richmond. Now, Charleston is upset that the whistle was blown because they didn't think it was cleared away far enough, which uh, they might have a beef on that one. I didn't see. Is it? Uh, it is Hall, yeah. Now John Wilson. 
Well, I believe he's wearing the captain's band. Uh, he's talking to the uh, center referee. The center referee again tonight is Charles Carson. I think he's done a pretty nice job of keeping this thing under control. You got a long ways to go, though. Yeah, you got a long way to go, Mike. It is getting a little chippier now, though. Every foul, somebody's getting angry about it. Yep. <laughs> and the ball is just driven down to the Charleston goal. Cooper handles it. Throws it out to Ferguson. And Ferguson now gets the return pass from Mueller. Playing it long and good job of settling it, Shinoski. And here nice is play Matthew. from Hall. Yep. Hall nudges it over to Martin. Quick cross, looking for George Davis the fourth. It's a really good thought from Martin there. He's got Lee there. He's got Garas there. Nice. And here's Asante. To Vercoloni. He's getting a challenge from behind from Cuevas. Boy, tremendous job by Vercoloni to split a couple of defenders. There's George Davis the fourth. He's in a battle, and they're going to whistle a foul on George Davis the fourth. And now George Davis the fourth is going to be warned. And Davis kicks the ball away there, yeah. and the referee's telling him stop the time wasting. Delay of game, five yard penalty. <laughs> Charleston players unhappy with that. Like I said, the gamesmanship is starting to come in. Yeah. Like 58th yeah. minute, win or go home. Yep. A little bit, little bit more desperation than we've seen so far this season. I've heard that phrase somewhere before. <laughs> Oh, I, I invented that. Oh, you did? Okay. Yeah. Loose ball. Here's Van Shake. And Taylor slides out. Well, that was kind of dangerous. Harrisburg City is beating Orlando one to nothing, Mike. Oh, my goodness. At halftime. Wow. And that's all I'm going to say is, that's all I'm going to let you say is, wow. <laughs> Here's the ball settled by Mueller, and we got a whistle. And Yisley is, I'm not sure if they got him for offside or. So here's the uh, free kick for Charleston. Sean Ferguson. one nothing Richmond on top. The first half goal in the 11th minute from Colin Martin. Here's Mueller playing it on the far side to Griffith. Oh, and Yambi took a shot to the head with uh, Kelly. And now the players are starting, the guys on the bench are starting to warm up, so I'm guessing 60th minute, Mike, probably I'm thinking within the next five to 10 minutes, we'll start seeing some of the substitutions come in. Yeah. And like, like you mentioned a couple minutes ago, it's going to be very interesting to see who subs what. We know Cordovez is going to come in right. uh, for Charleston. I would, <laughs> I'd bet the house on exactly. that one. Now, how, how will uh, Coach Kalashaw uh, match that up for Richmond? Yambi is the one. He, again, he took a shot in the head from the foot of uh, Dane Kelly. Uh, they whistled him for a high kick. City Stadium, Richmond, Virginia. And Richmond with the one nothing advantage here over the Charleston Battery. Richmond the fourth seed, Charleston the fifth seed. Mike Neville and Mark Bushman along with you. And the free kick. And Van Shake is able to track it down for Charleston. He lays off the pass to Portillo. Was on the far side now to Prince. Here's Prince. He's got Griffith with him, and he gives him the ball. Griffith gives the return pass. Good challenge by Colin Martin. And here's George Davis the fourth to Asante to Martin. Good job by Richmond to get out of their own end. Here's George Davis the fourth, surrounded by. Charles. Can't dance with it too much in yeah. there. He loses it. You got to move that ball quicker. And here's Prince. The Prince looking for a foul. He's looking back at the center referee throwing. Here's Cuevas. Back to Portillo. Headed away that time. 
And good challenge that time by Sanyang. And a nice play by Vercoloni. Oh, good timing on that challenge. If he misses that, he's wiping yep. the player out. George Davis the fourth now. Off to Sasha. Go Richmond, ahead. Richmond playing a little slower than I think they should be right now. As Charleston's continuing to push numbers up. Here's Alex Lee now. Off to Asante. Here's Martin. Playing it off to Gorez. Sasha able to find some room. Here's Asante. Pushes it wide to George Davis the fourth. Couldn't quite nudge it around the uh, Charleston defender. Well played that time by the battery. And Lee got tied up. Somehow kept the ball alive, but. And here comes Wilson again. Yep, here's the counter with John Wilson. Wilson cuts inside, still has possession. Plays it off to Cuevas. Good defense. Nice that play time from by Lee. Lee. Yep. Timed it perfectly. Now he's trying to hit, hook up with a long ball for Yisley. Yisley and Cooper comes out of the goal, way out of the goal to clear that one away. Good decision by the goalkeeper, yep. Cooper. That's one of those, if you come out, you have got to get that good yep. play from Cooper. Well, I, I like the uh, decisiveness instead of the hesitation. If he hesitates, yep. Yisley might get around him and have a wide open goal yep. yawning at him. Like what we saw from Taylor in the first half. Good, yep. good job of being aggressive by both keepers. Janowski plays it back now to Taylor. And a whistle and a foul against Jaisley as Ferguson hit the deck. Free kick for the battery. Charleston with a free kick opportunity here. And the ball is Headed by Shinovsky, settled down by Portillo. Now off to Griffith. And the ball slides through. Yambi fan down. Here's Kelly. Kelly again. Kelly climbing up a shot, and he scores! Dane Kelly. I think it was Yambi that kind of whiffed on the clearing yeah. attempt. Yeah, it was. It was Good pressure from Kelly to win the ball there, and just great composure. Nothing Ryan Taylor could do about that. Charleston, they are alive, yeah. playing very well. Like I said, they've played very well the last 10 to 15 minutes. Richmond seemed to have taken their foot off the gas a little bit. They've got the momentum now. So Dane yeah. Kelly, their leading scorer in the 63rd minute. And i tell you what, that was all Dane Kelly on yeah. that. He got the pressure to get the turnover. Very calm, cool, and collected. Slam that home past Taylor. So Dane Kelly knots the score at one apiece. They say now the 64th minute. Here's Bercoloni. Oh, Mike, we didn't think this game was going to end one nothing. Nope. Here's Lee, challenged by Van Shake, and there's a whistle and a foul against Van Shake. All played ahead to Colin Martin. Martin going on the far side to Sasha Goyes. He lays it off to Asante. Here's George Davis the fourth. Whole new uh, match now. Absolutely. There's George Davis the fourth. Just missed hooking up with Matthew Hall on that one as he skimmed the low pass. I believe it's going to be a goal kick for Charleston. Now they're seeing a throw in from deep in that corner right in front of the Red Army. Ball's flicked. And Cooper now fires it out on the far side to Griffith. He tracks it down. Almost that first touch eluded him, but there was nobody around him. Here's Kelly being watched by Yambi. Off to Portillo, his return pass, George Davis the fourth. Steps in front and takes that one away. Here's Sasha Gorez. 1-1 one, one tie now, second half. Richmond committing a lot of errors that they yeah. weren't making in the first yeah. half. Just passes that, that aren't going anywhere. And Here's Kelly. 
Gets a shot. Taylor, I think, nudged that over the crossbar. Yeah, Boy, he... Kelly is dangerous. Hey, fans, don't forget, Nike is a proud sponsor of USL Pro. You can follow at Nike Soccer on Twitter. That's where you'll get all the latest Nike Soccer information. Once again, that's at Nike Soccer on Twitter. So a corner kick opportunity now. Cuevas will take this one for Charleston. And the corner kick is headed away. And Griffith whiffed on his attempt. Here's Kelly being watched by Lee. Now Griffith. And that floated over the head of Sanyang. And trying. And Matthew Hall is taken down. No call. Here comes Charleston Cuevas into the box. Taylor handles it on a hop. This game is chaos right now, which does not bode well in Richmond's favor. They right. don't seem to be organized. And that ball squirts over the sideline. It'll be a throw in for the kickers and George Davis the fourth. We've got a Richmond player down. That's Yisley, and it looks like he might be cramping up. Yeah, it looks like he's rubbing that, rubbing that his quad there. Yeah. So Yisley is down. Again, the winner will move on to play the winner of the Orlando Harrisburg contest. And right now, uh, Harrisburg has the one nothing advantage as they get ready to get the second half underway. If Harrisburg should hang on and Richmond can squeeze out a win here, Richmond would host next week. Yes, we would get to call another game. Yes. I'd like that. <laughs> And Yisley is up and walking off under his own power, but very gingerly. So throw in for Richmond. Sasha Gora is on the far side. To Bercoloni. Play a little two-man game. Now Borcoloni rolls it over to Shinoski. There's Lee directing traffic. Now just will tap it back to Shinoski. And he'll play it on the far side. There's Borcoloni. Richmond working the ball towards midfield. Good ball that time yep. for Alex Lee. There's Lee with John Wilson watching him and Lee... Yeah, I could have done better with that one. Yeah, he shanked that one. And that's what, again, that's what Richmond was looking for, though, is to get Lee up into the, yeah. the middle, of the, uh, the third of the field for Charleston and swing those balls in because he got great crossing ability. Didn't work out for him that time. But Here's Cooper with the goal kick. And that ball is settled by Richmond. Here's Hall keeping it in play. Off to Colin Martin. Back for Hall, and that might have went off Wilson. Yeah, it's going to be a throw in for Richmond. Let's see if they do the quick restart. They're trying. Martin's been very quiet, Mike. We haven't yeah. heard a whole lot from him in the last, gosh, really this half. Yeah, I was going to say the entire half so far. And almost anybody from Richmond, actually. Charleston's really controlled the run of play. Yep. Here's Bercoloni. Plays it off to Asante. Almost seems like Richmond thought that this thing was over with at the half because they're not really attacking, generating much offense. Cooper has not been challenged really here in the second half. Where Charleston has picked up. There's a nice steal by uh, George Davis the fourth from Zach Prince. He lays it off now to Gores. Back for George Davis the fourth. Beautiful ball and a shot and it deflected off of a Charleston player, either Ferguson or Mueller. It's going to be a corner kick. That was the best sequence of the, of the second yep. half for Richmond. Garris plays it off to Davis, who finds Martin. Martin with all kinds of space. Charleston defender at the last second gets over there to deflect it, but best chance of the, of the half for Richmond. Maybe they heard us talking about not really getting into this thing in the second half. Here's they the did. corner kick opportunity. And that's cleared away easily by Prince. Looks like Adam Mina is getting ready to come in for Charleston. 
And we got Dane Kelly and uh, Samuel Asante. Here's our first, gonna have our first yellow card of the night well, to I Asante. I can tell you, I saw that Kelly pushed Asante mm -hmm. when that ball was uh, going back near midfield. I don't think Asante deserves the yellow card, to be honest with you. Well, I think he deserved the yellow, I think he got the yellow for pushing Kelly afterwards. Well, he get, yeah, it's always a, he got caught, but uh, those two have been battling all night. Yeah, they have been. And Mina is coming in number 27 for Charleston. He's coming in for number 24, Zach Prince. That's Mina for Prince. Adam Mina listed as a midfielder. And looks like Lee is getting ready to counter. Looks like Steven Basso is going to be coming in. Also wears number 36. Yep, that's who it is. So Prince. Vasso, like Matthew Hall, is another recent signing. Yeah. Played a lot of time, I believe, at Harrisburg City. Vasso's been around for a little while. There's Charleston with the restart. And the ball settled by Hall. Rolls the ball ahead to Yisley. Yisley tried to slip a pass through to Martin, but that was easily read by the Charleston defense. Dean Kelly with some well, challenges. Kelly is causing all kinds of problems. He's winning almost every 50-50 ball, or at least, or if he doesn't, Richmond turns the ball over quickly because of his pressure. Kelly is that really. little, little fly at the picnic you can't get rid of. Because he is really, <laughs> like you said, he's pestering, pestering, pestering. Here is Van Shake. Good ball movement. Here comes yeah. Wilson out of the back again. Wilson puts it into the box, and it floats over the head of uh, Mina, who just came in. And George Davis the fourth, clearing it near midfield for Yisley. His first touch eluded him. Griffith now to Mina. Mina tried to flick it around. George Davis the fourth stays on his feet. Here's Portillo. Van Shake. Looks like Nate Robinson's getting ready to come in for Richmond as well. Here's Wilson into the box. The ball's headed away. Kelly tried to, he was looking for a handball and he's gonna get he the call, it. yeah. And this is gonna be a very dangerous opportunity for Charleston. And now we got some shoving and pushing near midfield. John Wilson and Ferguson, Mueller. I didn't, I didn't see what happened there because we were looking down by the yeah. penalty box yeah. and then something happened at midfield. So good job from the fourth official though to run out there yeah, yeah. and get in between those before anything else can happen. So the referee crew is doing a very, very good job tonight because it's, it's getting heated. We're in the yep. 75th minute. Yep. You know, one mistake sends one of these teams home. Exactly. This is a great opportunity for Charleston just Absolutely. outside the 18-yard box. Absolutely. This is about the area where uh, Richmond scored the first half. And Nate Robinson is getting ready. He's uh, at the uh, midfield at the table. So out of all that, <laughs> doesn't look like we're going to see any plastic at all. So a great opportunity for Charleston here from about what, Mark 21, 22 yards yeah. or so? Yeah, dangerous area. Let's see what Cuevas can do. I think, I believe that Cuevas is gonna be the one to take this. He's got Mina and also uh, Van Shake with him. A 10 yard march off by the center referee. Cuevas bluffs the uh, first attempt. Puts it on goal and it goes over the cross. Over by about a foot. Yep. Good effort, though. So we'll have the substitution. Hey, for, uh, don't forget, uh, all this season, you have been able to catch every USL Pro regular season and playoff game. We're streaming them live on YouTube in this 2014 season. Features include DVR, chat, and social media interactivity. Subscribe for free to the Richmond Kickers YouTube channel today. 
We hope you've enjoyed our coverage on UT all season long of Richmond Kickers soccer. Here's Hall trying to control it. Corner it's kick. a corner. Yep. Good job by Hall. Wilson nudged it over the end line. I know Mark and I have enjoyed bringing you the uh, kickers games. And it looks like Colin Martin's going to take this corner kick. Got to clear that first defender. They haven't done that with their last two corners. Right. So here's Martin ready to take the corner. And that one was Didn't not do it clear. again. Yep. We'll do it again. Another kick. So Colin Martin will try it again. Now they're lining up. Uh, George Davis the fourth comes over. Bluffing the short corner. And now Sasha's going to take it. Yep. The veteran says, let me give this a shot. Shea Spitz, who is normally one that takes it. Shea's not even on the roster tonight. Here's Gorez hooking one, and that's knocked away by Charleston. And here's Dane Kelly. Off to Amina. Charleston's got numbers. Good ball for Wilson. Ooh, strong challenge from Asante, and then... And then Wilson is knocked down hard by Alex Lee. And the yellow is displayed to Lee. <laughs> Who says soccer is not a physical kind Absolutely. Of sport? Not good composure, though, to be honest with you. No, Alex Richmond's Lee. not showing me anything as far as... Uh, uh, they're just, like I said, they've, they've kind of lost their composure. They're not, not really done a whole lot the last 15 minutes. So Matthew Hall is going to be substituted for. Nate Robinson will come in for him. I thought Hall played very well tonight. And Basso's coming in for Colin Martin. I think Martin's a little tired. A little winded, yeah. Yeah, yeah he's, he's put in a really good shift tonight. I think he's, uh, he's just a little bit winded. So Cuevas looks like he's going to take this corner, or take this uh, free kick, excuse me. They mark Chisante and Basso back uh, the required 10 yards. Or Nate Robinson, excuse me, is there. Cuevas again bluffing that first attempt. And he sailed that one. Now he'd like to have that one back. Whew. That wasn't even close. So it'll be a goal kick for Richmond. Not sure what that was. <laughs> I don't think he did a look <laughs> the way he put his hands up. I don't think that's what he had in mind. One thing we know, it didn't work. But Richmond does dodge a bullet there. Yeah. You know, another free kick deep in their own area. Can't keep giving Charleston uh, opportunities like this. There's Taylor with the goal kick. Ball up in the air. And headed down by Van Shake. And now controlled by Nate Robinson. And Robinson. Actually, it was Alex Lee that had it first, and then uh, it'll be a throw in for Lee. There's Asante. Ball played back to Vercoloni. Good touch day. from Lee. Yep, good touch to George Davis, the fourth. Ball possessed now. Here's Robinson. Dancing away from a couple of the Charleston players. Off to Bercoloni. Over to Basso. Back to Luke. And now in midfield, Yambi over to Shinaski. Winding down this second half. Overtime threatening. Here's Lee. Lee and Wilson, they have had a, a spirited little yes, they have. matchup here in the last few minutes. I'm not sure Lee's not too happy with John Wilson. He's oh, and John Wilson's not happy with Alex right. Lee. <laughs> Lee's got to get his composure, though. He's just, he's really, that one, he just ran right at John Wilson. He's just got to settle down. Here's Shinoski off to Yambi, or now it's going to roll over to Basso. Here's Asante. At midfield. 1-1 tie. Winding down the second half. 
with overtime looming here at City Stadium. And a turnover. In Dan Kelly's cramped up. He's having a hard time moving. Ball in play. Now they're saying it's. Yeah, I don't know if that's a cramp for Kelly or a hamstring, but he dropped like a stone. Got did his best to get back up, but that's not a good sign for Charleston. He's, I, think, I think Kelly's been the best player on the field Without a doubt. tonight. Without a doubt. And we are in the 58th minute down in Orlando, Harrisburg City, still holding on to a 1-0 lead. Kelly's up. He's yeah, I think Kelly's done. Looks like number 16 there, Cordova's. Well, that's not, a, not really a drop-off, is it? <laughs> right, exactly. Not a bad trade-off. I'll tell you what, hats off to Kelly, though. He's really, really played well tonight. Like I said, best player on the field. Great finish to get the tie for Charleston. And like I said, bringing in someone like Cordova's off your bench is yep. nice luxury to have. So Cordova's into the lineup for Charleston, replacing Kelly. And it really doesn't look like a cramp. That does look like a hamstring injury because he's he's just kind of holding his holding his face. That's that's un, that's unfortunate for Kelly. Hope he's not uh, not too badly hurt. Right. Here's Asante. Plays it over here on the near side to Robinson. Or excuse me, to Lee. Here's Shinoski. And that ball's headed away by Mueller. Here's Bercoloni. Off to Asante. Here's Robinson. Ball poked away from him. And here comes the counterattack from Charleston. Here's Wilson. Off to Portillo. Here's Cuevas. Charleston knocking around a little bit, trying to get their offense organized. On the far side. Here's Griffith. And now Wilson, the veteran. Off to Portillo, back to Wilson. There's Ferguson. Charleston looks like everybody wants to touch the ball. There's Mueller. He's got all kinds of time and space to check out what he wants to do with the ball. He goes to Ferguson. Here's Portillo. Charleston really slowing this game down now. There's Griffith settling. Griffith gets it across. And Mina did a nice job of keeping that ball in play. And now Taylor handles it for Richmond. Both teams playing a little more nervous now. Yeah. You're at the point of the game yeah. where one mistake and you're done. So he's being a little cautious. And Taylor drives the ball forward. And we got a whistle and a foul. So Richmond will have the free kick opportunity. Shinowski. Off to Yambi to get the quick restart going. Ball played back. Now to Vercoloni. Off to Basso. And the ball got through to Nate Robinson. Robinson with a shot. And he skied that one. Good opportunity for Richmond there. Good ball from Basso. Yep. As it skirted through and found Robinson. That's a good word for it. Yeah, just came to find him. Yeah. Went through yeah. everybody. Susceptibly good ball. Like it had a magnet on it. <laughs> That's right. So Cooper now with the goal kick. Ball battle, 50-50 ball battle near midfield. And now Cadovez. Getting the return pass, Yambi's there with him, step for step. And, and a whistle and a foul against Cordovez. That's two big guys just fighting yeah. there, Mike. Yeah. 
If you're Yambi, you're going, okay, I had to go against this smaller, tough guy. Right. And Kelly, now you're bringing on a fresh Cordova's, who's exactly. a bigger version of Kelly. Yeah, they got Kelly listed on the program at 5'11. They've got Cordova's at 6'2. Yeah. William Yambi is going to need the whirlpool tonight. <laughs> There's Shinoski. To Asante. 1-1 one, one tie. Good job of keeping that ball alive. Here's Alex Lee with the cross, and that goes off of Ferguson. It'll be a corner kick. So a corner kick for the kickers. It'll be Nate Robinson taking it. Right in front of the Red Army. And Robinson with a kind of a low line drive corner that's knocked away to be a throw in. The corners have not been uh, Richmond's strong point tonight. No, no. There's a throw in for the kickers. 88th minute, two minutes plus stoppage time remaining. Here's Lee, ball chested down. Here's Bercoloni. And Luke off to Asante. Asante off to Gorez. Into the box, and it's cleared away by Mueller. It's a good ball from Gorez there. Yeah. He's kind of looking for somebody. He does such a great job with those in-swingers. Yep. They're so hard to – I mean, those are those are easily could be own goals when right, players exactly. are trying to, to, to get them out of there. Well, a moment ago that led to that, that corner kick. Yeah. Uh, Ferguson almost knocked it in his own goal off the cross from uh, – I'm not sure if it was Robinson or Lee. And now here's Van Shake, and he clears it away. There's George Davis the fourth. He'll throw it in. It's the return pass. Davis the fourth able to – Nudge it over. Ball played back to Lee. Here's Bercoloni. Good ball to uh, Basso. Here's Asante with some opportunities. That ball went, uh, went off of George Davis the fourth. Ooh, near turnover. Here's Asante. Gorez. To Basso. That's what they want. Yep. Oh, good fake. In. And that. Yeah, there's Gorez with a shot. Oh, and right to a shot. It's still loose in the goal. Knocked up in the air. Robinson was the one that got that second shot on goal. Boy, Charleston dodged a huge bullet after Gordon made a ter terrific save. Or Cooper, excuse me. Boy, Cooper. Wow, Cooper comes up big time. What a great sequence there. Ball is knocked away by Ferguson. Here's Asante. Richmond really cranking up the pressure now. Here's Gorez. Back to him. Mike, I was positive that was going in. I, I, I really was. Here's the cross, right? Oh, boy. I thought George Davis IV could have settled that and got a shot away. Here's Asante, and he'll take one. That's headed up in the air, and we've got a whistle and a foul against, I believe, Yisley. Yeah, anytime, anytime a player goes up against the keeper, they're going to yeah. call the foul there. Wow. Wow. Great, great nice. sequence there. And the ball now squirts free to Taylor in goal for Richmond. Well, there's some urgency on the Richmond sideline now. Here's Jambi playing it forward. Five minutes of stoppage time. Wow. That's plenty of time for either team to knock in what would be the game-winning goal. We've seen stoppage time goals a couple times yep. this year. The Rochester game. Yep. Rochester scores as uh, soon as extra time, I mean, uh, stoppage time starts. Two minutes later, Richmond scores. So a lot can happen in five minutes. Here's Taylor with the long ball. Nicely is able to chest it down to George Davis, the fourth. And George Davis, the fourth, stumbles. There's Ferguson. And it goes over the sideline. It'll be a throw in for Charleston. And the Boo Birds showed up. Home referees do not like that call. Yeah. 
So a throw in for John Wilson. 1-1 one, one tie, overtime looming. And here goes the speedy Cordovez. Nice Someone, play. Yeah, he got around the defense, puts it into the middle, and nobody's there for Charleston. I thought he could have cranked that one out. Here's Jambi. Back to Gorez, off to Asante. Samuel Asante. Off to Nate We've got numbers. Yambi's running on the back there. That ball slipped through, and I don't think Geisley expected that one to slide through. The ball's headed down and cleared away. That time by uh, number 23. Yambi was making a Sanye. run out of the back. He was at the, he was at the far post. They just couldn't find him. Yep. Throw in for Charleston. And another sub. Looks like number 15, Emmanuel Ajeti. He's coming in for number 14, Jared Van Schack. That's Ajeti for Schack. So Jetty Agite. is Agite. 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 Thank you, Mr. PA announcer Dave Wainwright. Yep. Emmanuel Agite is into the lineup for Charleston. There's a ball played near midfield for Coloni. Gorez lets that go through to Basso. There's Sasha. And that skips wide of the goal. Goal kick. I don't see many people leaving, Mike. <laughs> no, no. This has been a very entertaining game. And it looks like it's a match that's heading to overtime. You say that. <laughs> Battle for the loose ball. Going to be a throw in for Charles. Wilson will take it. Ball went over Cordovez. Here's Shinaski. To Bercoloni. Richmond works out of their own end. I think we're coming up on five minutes. Might be the last hurrah for Richmond. Here's Gorez. Here's Jambi. Shinaski taking a look. Headed away by Charleston. I think Charleston's just trying to catch their breath. Got to have almost everybody behind the ball here. Here's Bercoloni. Off to Robinson. And that pass was easily anticipated by Charleston. Here is Cuevas. Off to Portillo. Trying long ball. Good play there from Lee. Yep. He's got numbers. They've got to force the ball. There's Gores. Back to Bercoloni. Here's Asante. Asante, a little stop and go. Drops it off to Robinson. That pass attempt knocked away by Cuevas. And here's Wilson. And Wilson's still going at midfield. Here's Griffith. Griffith just outside the box. Here's Wilson. He's going to have a go. And he does just over the crossbar. That does it. So we are going to be heading into overtime. And the overtime is what, two 15 minutes? Two full 15 minute halves. There's no sudden death. And if there's no score, if they're still tied. And they will go to penalty kicks. All right, so there you go. That's the, uh, the rule. 30 more minutes of fun, Michael. Yes, exactly. I don't even know which team has the advantage, Mark, because uh, Richmond had a great flurry there with late in the uh, regulation and into the stoppage time. Yeah. And, but, uh, you know, Charleston <laughs> had a great flurry in the early portion yes, of the they second half. So they did. I'm not sure who you would give the edge to. I don't know. i got to catch my breath. <laughs> 
You look at uh, Richmond's lineup, Gorez, of course, uh, he's gone the entire contest. Um, Samuel Asante, although Asante uh, looks like he's got some, some legs, uh, some gas in the tank still. It'll be interesting to see what happens. And of course they are, Mark mentioned two full 15 minutes. So if somebody scores, it's not over. About the last 10 minutes yeah. there, so they kind of had to do that, try and slow the game down. But, you know, the sequence near the very end, and I, I don't know who it was, unfortunately. I don't have the, uh, the, the replay in front of me, but uh, it might have been Robinson. It looked like he just had an yeah, open, open goal, Robinson, yeah. and he took his time. He was very composed, played it on the ground, didn't get excited. Somehow Cooper was able to get some part of his yeah. body on yeah. that. I can't wait to see the replay on that. and was able to keep it out, but... Uh, you know, I think the entire stadium was halfway into that goal right, exactly, celebration. Exactly. And just uh, just a, a really good game. You know, it's what you want to see in a playoff right. in a playoff game. Two teams that are very evenly matched. Charleston's played very, very well. Um, I, I am curious to see. I believe Charleston's made three subs so far. Richmond has two. Right. So they've got three. Uh, Richmond has three remaining. I'm curious if, if uh, Coach Kalishaw is going to keep this the way it is or if he's going to bring in somebody like a Hugh Roberts or – you know, Matthew Delicat right. is is on the bench yep. and he's been injured, but can he go? Right. Can he go twenty to twenty five minutes, Mike? Exactly. Yep. And like I say, uh, no Shea Spitz tonight on the roster. And, no, uh, he's he's you know with a bit of an injury. That's what I thought. That's the report that we got. But I tell you, uh, the Colin Martin uh, has played played well. He's of course he's been substituted for, but uh, very instrumental, especially in the first half. Uh, he had a lot of touches. But we'll see what happens here in this first 15 minutes. And again, we're going to play two 15 minutes, no matter what. So, and I'm not sure I didn't see who's going to kick off, but we'll find out here momentarily who's going to kick off. I just heard the PA announcer mention the score of the Harrisburg game. I'm not sure. Is it still 1-0? I believe it is still 1-0. Let me go check my. Check your app. Check my app. You know, a couple weeks ago, I don't think either one of us knew what an app nah. was there, Mike. 70, 75th minute, Harrisburg City still up one nothing. Wow. What a huge upset that would be. That, In all honesty, that would probably, for me, as long as I've covered USL and when it was the A-League and all right. that, would be the biggest upset that I know of in, in history. But it's Orlando. They've yeah. got Kevin Molina, who's yep. a shoe in for the MVP. Um, there's lots of guys on Orlando. They can, they can light, up, yep. light you up real quick. So got a long ways to go on that one. Hey, Richmond's got to get through this one right, first. Exactly. The winner of this one will play the winner of the Harrisburg Orlando game. So if Richmond can pull out a win, they would host that game if Harrisburg hangs on with that decision. You think they'd let us call that again? I think they'd let us call that game? I hope so. I hope so. Unless we don't have to pay him. <laughs> so Ryan Taylor in goal once again, of course, for this overtime. Cooper, who has been solid to say the least for Charleston. Probably the reason this thing is still tied is Cooper. So getting ready for overtime. And Yisley is still out there. It's like he's trying to stretch, trying to keep those legs warm and not cramp up. Nate Robinson is still out there. George Davis, the fourth, who's gone all the way. Once again, we'll play two 15-minute Cuevas is also still out there for uh, Charleston. He's gone the entire distance. Charleston has the kickoff to start this first 15 minutes. Here's Griffith. Off to Mina. On the far side. Watch by Basso. Going to be a throw in for Charleston.
So the battery will throw it in. And Matthew Delicott is on the sidelines warming up for Richmond, so I'm wondering if we're going to see him. Here's Griffith. Here's Mina. Up to Portillo. Comes across into the box and... It fell right to... Oh, boy. Mina would like to have a better yeah. opportunity than that. Yeah, it looked like that was falling right to him. Yep. So a goal kick for Richmond. Ryan Taylor will take it. And that ball is headed down and possessed by Charleston. Agite, who just entered the contest, had a touch on it. And there's Basso playing it forward for Richmond. Right to Mueller for Charleston. He'll settle and play it back to Cooper. Off to Ferguson. Our first 15 minute overtime period. In this 1 1 deadlock. As we mentioned, uh, we play two full 15 minutes, and then if there's no scoring, we head to the what everybody really loves PK shootouts. Yeah. <laughs> Here's Portillo. Off to Mueller. <clears throat> Plays it to Griffith. Nice ball to Griffith. And Griffith still in possession. Gores went down. Here's Griffith into the box. Whew. Boy. Nervous moments there. Yep. And Robinson now plays it back to Alex Lee. And now Asante, watched by Portillo. And he gave it away. Here's Griffith. Griffith now with a shot, and that's over the crossbar. Several of Charleston's best opportunities have come off passes from Richmond that, <laughs> that did not go where they were supposed right. to go. They went right to Charleston players. They were unforced errors. So that's one of the things that, uh, that Charleston was able to create, a lot of these opportunities. Fatigue might be settling in on some of I these players. I totally think it is. That's why I'm curious to see if either one of these coaches is going to go to their bench here in the, in the near future. And Richmond now in possession as the ball is played back to Alex Lee on the near side. Plays it ahead to Robinson. Back to Lee. And back to Shinoski. Here's Vercoloni. Sante now rolls it over on the far side to Basso. Here's Sasha Gorez. Vercoloni. Richmond trying to build now on the offense. Here's George Davis the fourth. Being watched very carefully. Gets it to Robinson. And a near turnover. There's a miscommunication between Robinson and George Davis the fourth, but Richmond maintains possession. Here's Yambi. And again, bad unforced turnover there. Here's Griffith. Griffith now just nudges it over to Mina. And here's Portillo. And Basso is going to pounce on that pass and play it back to Ryan Taylor in goal. Ball played to Gores. That's what they need. Quicker balls there. And another giveaway. The price is right with uh, all the prizes that Richmond has given away. There's San, San Yang. Ball played on the far side now to Mueller. Here's Ferguson. Off to Wilson. Wilson getting a challenge. His pass is taken away by Lee. Both teams just showing some errant passing. 
Yeah, like you said, Mike, you think that fatigue is definitely setting in a little bit. There's been a very fast-paced game. It's not yeah. been a slow game right. at all. And a lot of the players that are making those unforced passes are guys that have been playing mostly all the yeah. entire game, you know. Oh, new, nice move by Davis. And his shot attempt blocked. It squirts over to Robinson. Nate Robinson lays it off to Lee. Good ball to George Davis, the fourth, but he's being shadowed by Ferguson. Here's Robinson into the box, and that's headed away by Mueller. Here's Asante. Off to Vercoloni, back to Asante. Here's Basso. That's knocked away that time by Sanyang. Here's Vercoloni. Richmond now building some offensive pressure. Here's Lee. Takes a look. Good ball to George Davis, the fourth. And Lee lays it back to Asante. He's got some pressure on him. Gives it to Shinaski. Basso flicks it back to Yambi. And here is Shinaski. Alex Lee surveying the field. Back to Shinaski. Rolls the ball forward. There's Vercoloni. On the far side to Basso. <coughs> Pardon me. Here's Asante. Not much pressure on him. Here's Vercoloni. Off to Garaz. Here's Basso. Looking for the cross. Gets it into the uh, box and it sails over everybody. And will trickle. Oh, it's kept in play. Thought that was going over the end line, but I think Wilson decided to keep it in play. Here is Wilson. He's also gone the entire way tonight. Yeah. He's getting some tired. You got some tired legs out there, Mike. Yeah. You can tell. And here is Griffith. Quentin Griffith gets inside the box, gets a shot away, it hit the uh, crossbar. And it's loose and it's cleared away. Well, that was a deceiving shot. Really was. Great run from Griffith out of the back. There's Portillo. He and Wilson have been so dangerous for Charleston. They've been doing that all night. Agite plays it back to Wilson. Wilson into the box, and it's headed away that time on a fine play by Shinaski. Charleston will gather the ball in at midfield. Sanyang now plays it over to Griffith. Griffith is going to make another run. Just hit the crossbar a moment ago. Good ball. Cordobez, and that Oof. one skimmed just wide. Oof. Taylor was not sure about that one. That was a fantastic turn by Cordovez, and I think it might have caught Ryan Lowell's flat-footed. He didn't miss by much on that one. No, he did not. Dodged the bullet on the uh, crossbar there. Yep. There's the goal kick for Taylor. 1-1 one, one tie, overtime. Whistle. And a foul against San Yang. Not sure if that's Bercoloni or who the player is down. No, it's uh, actually Jason Yisley. Yeah. Took a shot to the back of the head. So Richmond now with a free kick opportunity. We played, what, almost 10 minutes of this uh, first overtime, Mark? 20 minutes to go. I don't know about you, Mike. I'm tired. <laughs> There, as you mentioned, Mark, there are some tired bodies out there. Whistle and... Yeah, every time a player goes down now, it takes them just a little bit longer yeah. to get up. Yeah. And the center referee is telling William Yambi to settle down. Yambi's not very happy at all. There's Cooper hitting the uh, free kick. And Yambi. Now the ball is possessed by Charleston. Ball rolled ahead to Cordovez. And 
Looking for some help, now it's dropped off. There's Cuevas playing it on the far side. Mina now plays it back. Charleston's doing a really good job of finding that open man, making Richmond chase. Here's Wilson. Tried to roll the ball through, but Alex Lee read that and gets the counterattack going for Richmond. Good ball. Well, it was a, I if thought that, it was a better ball than that. If, well, if it was anybody but Garris running for that, yeah, well, it had true. a better shot. If that was if that was Asante or Davis or Vercoloni, they had a shot at it. But good thought from Yisley, though. Yep. There's the ball played on the near side to Alex Lee. Lee playing it forward to Nate Robinson, trying to work his way around the veteran Wilson. And good pressure from Robinson forced that throw in. For really Richard. good, really, really good from Robinson there to force the turnover. Here's Lee. Good ball off to George Davis, the fourth. He bluffs the cross, now drops it off to Lee. Here's Asante. Vercoloni plays it wide. Here's Basso. Back to Luke. Vercoloni. Here's Gores. Vercoloni dropping it off. Here's Asante. And the turnover as Cuevas comes up with it for Charleston. Here's Portillo. His pass was picked off. Here's Yisley. And he couldn't control it. Ball squirts free to uh, Sante. Sante being watched by Mina. Looks like they got a corner out of that. Yep, yep. they did. Yep. Little Samuel Asante was able to force the defender on him. I think it was Mina that was on him, and he knocked it off him. Nate Robinson will take this corner. I'll tell you, it's a, Kickaroo is even tired. He's down, sitting down <laughs> on the sidelines. The ball in, that ball goes over the end line. Goal kick. Goal kick. Goal kick for the Kickaroo says, I'm tired too. I'm going to take a seat. Got to hand it though to the, to the Red Army. Yeah. They have been standing and sharing the entire game. You know, they're tired too. Mike, they're in the 89th minute down in Orlando, and Harrisburg City is still holding on to that one nothing lead. Are you kidding me? Here's the goal kick. And the ball now possessed by Vercoloni. Plays it wide to Basso. Here's Asante. Shinaski settles. Getting some token pressure, but... Not a lot of pressure on him, so he's able to find Nate Robinson. Here's Robinson, laying it off to Vercoloni. Here's Asante. I think in this first overtime, uh, Mark Richmond's had the run of play as far as possession, although a nice sliding play that time. And down. What are we going to see here? That looks like it's going to be a red. That is a straight red card. And that is on Agite. And Charleston is furious. Oh. It's Alex Lee that went down. That really was, that was, a, I'm sorry, that was a very, very bad foul. That was two-footed studs up. Lee tried, Lee tried to leap him. Yeah. And Agitate, he brought that foot up with the spikes exposed. It's, it's, a, it's a red card. It's an absolute red card. It's a definition of it. Well, the advantage now heavily swings towards Richmond, you would think, Mark. Well, if you're Charleston, you are at the point now where you want to make, you know, really go into defensive shell and maybe play for the penalty yeah. kicks because you do have a keeper in, in, in Cooper who's as good as anybody, if not the best keeper in the league, great shot stopper. So this is really up to Richmond. Richmond's got a good opportunity here. So the red card was delivered to Agite. If you're not familiar, uh, Charleston will have to play a man down the rest of this contest. The uh, rest of this over first overtime and the entire second overtime. Yeah. We are almost done. This should be the last play of the first overtime if we switch it. So 
George Davis the fourth looks like he's lining up this free kick opportunity. Ajite is going to be escorted to the uh, locker room. Great opportunity here for Richmond from about 30 yards away. George Davis the fourth. And he put, he had his Wheaties today because he put a lot on that one. That's a missed opportunity for Richmond there. Yeah, I got to do better with that opportunity. You know, that's another one of those things where tired legs come in. Yeah. You try to, you, you don't want to under hit it, so you hit it yeah. too hard yeah. and you knock it 30 yards out. So here's Cooper with the uh, free kick, the goal kick. That's the end of the first overtime. Yep. Here's the whistle to end our first 15 minutes. So the first 15 minutes are in the book. 15 more to go. And if we don't have a score, we're going to head to a penalty kick shootout. So the second overtime on the horizon. But again, Charleston has to play a man down. And like you said, Mark, they're probably going to go into a defensive shell and just hope for a PK shootout. Maybe try to get Cordova's or somebody on a on a quick counter, yeah. but for the most part, if I said if you're if you're Charleston, you're playing nine or ten behind the ball and it's really going to be up to Richmond now to break them down and they haven't really done a good job right. with that in the in the second half in the first overtime. Um, there was more space in the first half and they were able to use that quick one touch passing to get to get through Charleston. Weren't able to do it so much this time. Right, exactly. So again, second 15 minute overtime. Approximately four minutes remaining in the other, other quarter final match. Harrisburg still leads Orlando. Harrisburg with that one nothing advantage still over Orlando. Crowd is very aware of that score now. Yep. So a huge opportunity for Richmond if the uh, Result in Orlando stays that way. Didn't think that, to be honest with you, didn't think that result, if it stands, it would happen. Although I'm sure Mark Harrisburg got a lot of confidence after that win a few weeks ago in Harrisburg. Yep. And I think they played him very tough a few weeks later, a couple of weeks yep. after that, down in, down in Orlando. Now you look at the final standings, uh, Orlando City, Ended up with 19 wins, four losses, and five draws. Sacramento uh, with 17 wins, seven losses, and four draws. LA Galaxy 2, 15 wins, seven losses, and six draws. Richmond, 13 wins, just three losses, but really where that hurt them was the 12 draws. If they could have got two, three results on the uh, good results with wins, they would have uh, certainly been... Uh, either the first or second seed, without a doubt. Yeah, they dropped a few points at home that they yeah. probably shouldn't have. The the one one draw against Dayton, it was the the worst team in the league. A one one draw on the road to to Orange County. They uh, they drew zero zero with Real Salt Lake back in yeah. I believe late yeah. June. Uh, you know, Real Salt Lake only traveled with 13 guys, right, so right. Uh, you know, there were some missed opportunities. I think Rich will be the first to say that. Sure, you know, sure. absolutely. You have you have 12 draws, and yep. so five of the 12 draws were here at City Stadium. So that just tells you. But again, you can't be too upset with a 13-3 and 12 record, to be nope. honest with you. It just shows you the quality of the other teams yes. in the league with Sacramento, Orlando, and LA yep. Galaxy, that you have three losses and you finish fourth. So it's going to be very interesting these next 15 minutes because you've got two big guys on the bench for, for Richmond and Hugh Roberts and Matthew Delicott. Yeah. And, you know, when we talked about trying to break Charleston down, it's going to be very difficult to do now because we know that they're going to play more compact. you got to wonder if Lee's thinking maybe we throw in Roberts and Deli and just try right. to serve balls over the top. You've got Yisley already in there, so you get big guys. Just serve it up. You've got guys in, in Garez and Robinson and Lee that are great at serving the ball. So, you know, you got 15 minutes. Right. You know, maybe that's maybe that's what you want to do. So Richmond will kick off to start this second 15-minute OT, and we're underway from City Stadium. Second overtime. Again, if this remains scoreless, we head to the PK shootout. And we've been down that road once or twice, haven't we, Mark? Yeah. Here's Asante. Playing. Those are not fun. Those are those are as bad for us as the right. announcers. Exactly. Here's Asante. Vercoloni. Playing it for Yisley, he got a foot on it, but that's all he could do with it. 
Goes over the uh, end line, it'll be a goal kick for Cooper. What a marvelous game he has played in goal for Charleston. He really he has. Probably what three big saves at least two, well, or, two or three. That sequence at the end of the at the end of the game, uh, regulation. Sorry, right? Regulation was just phenomenal. I I was really ready to just to say it was a goal for Richmond. He somehow got to it. So you know, I said it's you know a confident goalkeeper, and you know if Richmond goes if this game goes to penalties, you know Charleston's gotta gotta like their chances. Yep. Here's Wilson playing it, trying to hook up with. Cordovez, throw in for Richmond. Now we're not there yet, but if we get to a PK shootout, the players on the field are the only ones that can take the That pitch. is correct, yeah, yes. And again, you're looking at tired legs. Yes. And we saw a couple of those in the World Cup. Yep. Some tired legs making those balls sky or take a little bit too much off them. There's Asante, nifty move by Asante. There's Basso. Yeah, so fakes the cross with the left foot and then try to get around Mina. Good defense that time by Mina. He did a real good job, but he gave it away. And his pass went right to Asante. Here's Gorez. Here's George Davis, the fourth. And Ferguson got a shin on it, and there's a foul against Nate Robinson. Heard somebody, uh, one of the uh, folks here next to us, yell, take the shot instead of, you know. That's, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. He, he just, you know, he, it's when funny, you, you waited just to wait that tad second too long, and all of a sudden the defender can close down on you. Especially when you have that many defenders behind the ball. Right. You know, earlier Basso, he had the, the defender beaten there, but he tried to fake him out again, and you can only beat a guy but so many times right. before he's going to steal it from you. And the ball controlled by Robinson near midfield for a moment. Yes, he will can continue to maintain possession for the kickers. Here's Jambi playing it forward for Shinovsky. Or excuse me, for Basso. Here's Asante. And Sanyang had the turnover for Charleston. Here's Bercoloni. Robinson surveying the field. Here's Lee. Well, you can see how gingerly he, he went after that ball. He's very tired, those legs. Kalashaw's calling for, uh, looks like he's calling for Roberts. Looks like Arbelez is coming in, too. And we've got a player down on the far side for Richmond, and it is Alex Lee. I told you how gingerly he went after that ball. Yeah. yeah. Looks like he's cramped up. I think that's why he was calling Arbelez over. Right, right. Took me a second to get that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for being on top of that. Why, certainly. And if you're Richmond, you want to make the sub as quick as possible. You, want, you don't want to lose any time on this. Right. And it will be Arbelez coming in. And I think you're right, Mark. He'll be coming in for uh, Mr. Lee, Alex Lee. So we're 1-1, second overtime here at City Stadium in Richmond, Virginia. Mike Neville and Mark Bushman along with you. Recap the scoring real quick in the first half. Early in the 11th minute, Colin Martin struck for Richmond to give them a 1-0 advantage. It stayed that way until the 60th, uh, 64th minute of the, into the second half, and that's when Dane Kelly, the very dangerous Dane Kelly, the Charleston Battery's leading scorer, was able to drive home a goal to tie this thing up. And that's where we stand as we're in the second overtime. Here's Asante off to Basso. Back to Asante. There's Basso. And Gorez. Plays it on the far side. There's Vercoloni. Yeah, that's much better. Trying to hook up with the Isley, and there's a whistle. No, nope. no goal. Nope, calling a foul. Looks like he's calling a foul on uh, Yisley. I don't know. I thought the guy had Yisley's jersey. Hell, no, Yisley's not not really complaining much. So. so here comes Charleston now. Again, remember they're playing a man down. After the red card was issued to Hagiste. And here 
Jambi. And he shields off Mina, it'll be a goal kick. So Taylor will take the goal kick for Richmond. We've got a Richmond player, Basso is down. Not sure. Uh, He's one of the substitutions, yeah. so if there's an issue there. Ball dropped off for Sante. Looks like he might have he took a shot in the ribs, Mike. Here's Roccoloni. Off to Gores. Sasha hooks a ball to the far side. Going to the end line, trying to make the cross. And it'll be a goal kick. Goal kick. Substitution for the kickers. That was our boys. Now well, Basso's got to come out. Sub and a sub. It'll be Roberts coming in for Basso. Roberts for Basso for Richmond. Yeah, he's holding, he's holding his ribs. He yeah. was taking a shot. Having a hard time breathing out there. So the goal kick for Cooper. And the battle for that ball is controlled by Richmond. Here's Shinoski. Off to Arbelez. And he gave it away. Here's Wilson. Oh, good decision by Wilson. The ball is played ahead, but here's Shinoski. Off to Asante. Here's Sasha Gores. To Asante. San Yang is watching him carefully. Got the overlap with Arbelez here. Yeah. Ball lifted into the box. It's headed away by Charleston. And there's a steal from uh, Roberts. Almost picked the pocket of uh, number 11, Griffith. About seven minutes left before we go to penalties. Here's Wilson off to Portillo. And Portillo will play it back to Griffith. And excuse me, that's Mueller. Mueller playing it back now to Cooper. And he hits one. Yambi with the uh, header. Throws Davis. Good the opportunity here. They got to move it quicker. Ball played in, and Cooper quickly came off his line and smothered that. Cooper will take his time and punt it away. And Arbelez tracks that ball down. Cuevas intercepted that pass. Here's Portillo. Off to San Yang. Loose ball and squirts free to Garez. And Sasha Wilson was there to play that one, and the ball rolls over the sideline. And possession now for Richmond once again. Here's Bercoloni. And they're still in stoppage time down in Orlando, and uh, Harrisburg City has had a red card ejection. Robbie Dershang got ejected. So we're still watching that one intently, obviously. So hearts are beating fast down there as well. And Griffith, here's Gorez into the box and it's flicked away. And now San Yang off to Portillo. And Cuevas sends it long. Harrisburg City has beaten Orlando 1 0. Wow. Unbelievable. The eighth seed knocking off the top seed. Here's Gorez. Here's Bercoloni. Asante rolls it through to Yisley. Yisley tried to dance around Ferguson, and the foul is called on Yisley. Sean Ferguson went down after getting clipped. Foul called on Richmond. The kick for the battery. Foul 
So Harrisburg pulling off the stunner so far in these USL playoffs. A stunner in the history of the yeah. playoffs, as I said earlier. I'm, I, again, Mike, I follow this game yeah. for 15 years, this league. I don't ever remember, remember a bigger upset in the playoffs. I really don't. So Ferguson and Yisley talking to one another, but it's a very, it's not an animated conversation. It's like a, a kind of a hope you're okay kind of a talk. So Cooper will hit the free kick. And again, just drive it down the field. Ball possessed by Richmond. Here's Jambi rolling it over to Gorez. And Sasha still with it. He is so deceptive with his fakes. Here's Roberts. Ball was knocked away from him. Good recovery there defensively. And they throw in for Richmond. And another sub for Charleston. Number 12, Michael Chang. Yep. And Delhi is coming in as well. Yep. Now is this move for Delhi? You maybe maybe thinking about maybe the the PK shootout. Michael uh, uh, Cordova's is coming out for Charleston. Wow. That's a big surprise to me. That's a huge surprise. And Asante is out. Delhi coming in. Good hand for Asante, and an even bigger hand for Delhi entering the contest. Rose Davis the fourth with the throw and gets the return pass. A lot of height in there for Richmond yeah. now. And that ball knocked away by Cooper. He got a paw on it. There's a follow-up shot. In the goal! In the back of the net, Matthew Delicott. First touch. Unbelievable. Cooper got a left paw on it. And the ball deflected right to Richmond. And the ball was put in and Delhi knocks it into the back of the net. You know, Cooper came out on that play, and he, he whiffed on the ball a little bit. Here's a replay right now. I'm not sure who had the follow-up shot for Richmond, but it was Delhi who finished it off. We're a, little, we're a little bit behind, Mike. I'm trying to see the replay here, but holy cow. That came out of nowhere. So Richmond <laughs> we've been now. looking for Delhi for <laughs> 115 minutes. Comes in the 117th, and here we go. What a play. Now, can they hang on to this 2-1 advantage? Can they? And I still didn't see who got the sub. We got Matt sitting next to us. He's trying. He's helping us out. We appreciate that, buddy. Here's Griffith. All right. Griffith looking ahead for. They hold on for three more minutes, Michael. They're hosting next week against Harrisburg City for the right to go to the final. And the ball is knocked away. Here's Griffith. He plays it over now to Wilson. Wilson into the box. It's headed up in the air. Roberts gets ahead on it. You know, if you're rich and you don't want to do anything fancy, just start clearing the ball. And Dante Marina, Marini is in for uh, Charleston, Mark, number 19. Here's Griffith to throw it in. Got a whistle. And the center referee is going to Hugh Roberts and Ferguson, and now Sasha and Ferguson. Are the assist on the goal, I believe, went to Davis on the goal by Delhi. George Davis, the fourth, is getting an assist on the goal. The go ahead goal from Delhi. Here's the throw in, it's in the box, and it's cleared away. Ball well headed forward by Charleston. Roberts gets ahead on it. Ball well played wide, Robinson. Just knock that in the corner and yep. just take your time. You've got about a minute left. Ball yep. well played forward, Geisley. And he's gonna carry it to the corner and hold on to it. Smart. Yep. Geisley and Mueller, ball's poked free. And Robinson lays it off. And George Davis, the fourth, stole it back. Two minutes of stoppage time. In the There's Arbelez. And Yisley will get the throw in for Richmond. Yeah. 
and foul against Richmond. How about Matthew Delicat? He has an unbelievable <laughs> percentage as far as shots on goal and goals scored. It's incredible. He's a magnet. He's having a magical season. And the whistle. And they call Yellow card. Yeah. And exactly. we got another problem here in the is corner. That, is that Shinovsky that's being? Shinovsky got a yellow card. And then number six. And Ferguson. And Richmond doesn't want to do anything stupid here. Don't get any needless yellows or red cards that might get them suspended next week. And, and I think we're going to get something. I'm not sure how you can't. Cuevas is not happy. Got to show some composure here. Yep. So now they got to sort this all out. And they're still having some problems. Yep. It's like somebody's getting a red card here. Oh, okay. Now is someone going to go get ejected for Richmond, though? Drew Roberts is not happy. I think Cuevas has been issued a red card or will be issued a red card. That's, I think that's what the PA announcer said. I'm glad. I'm glad Dave can keep it organized. In the, yeah. And we got the coaches that are going after it down on the sidelines here. <laughs> well, they told you this is a heated rivalry. Well, I think Arbelea has kind of took a kick at somebody. And the two coaches still. Now, that's definitely not what you wanted for Richmond if you're able to hold on here. So Arbelez is being escorted off. The uh, coach for uh, Charleston's name is Mike uh, Anhaus. Anhaus, yeah. yeah. He's been around for a long time as well. Probably fry an egg on the back of his neck. <laughs> <laughs> that was oh, Shinovsky, I believe. It's a good opportunity here yep. for Charleston. This game is not over. 10 v 9. Michael Chang is there's Griffith, and that's wide. Goal kick and for the Richmond. Cooper was up there for Charleston. It's year of desperation time. Yeah. So we'll see what we've got. Maybe another minute or two tops. So Ryan Taylor will hit the goal kick. And Taylor needs to get this back into play quickly. The referee is going to give him a card for time wasting. Right. Don't need that. Yeah, I, I don't think I don't think there's going to be a lot of handshakes after this game, Mike. Here's Taylor. Hits it. And we got a whistle. Another foul on Yisley. Here's Cooper playing it. Uh, well, it's going to be a free kick for Griffith. Yeah. <laughs> Delhi's worried about the placement of the ball. A lot of finger pointing going on right now. And <laughs> he still moved it up. Yeah. Gotta love this game. You yeah. really do. Yeah. The gamesmanship for these guys. So here's Griffith. Griffith needs to deliver a strong ball here. Ball's knocked around, trying to chain. Into the box it goes. Taylor got a fist on it. That's there it is, the whistle, and the Richmond kickers, the number four seed, is going to upend the fifth-seeded Charleston battery in double overtime. 
Two to one is the final. Matthew Delacott getting the game winning goal. He had just reported in from George Davis the fourth. And the kickers with a 2-1 victory. Wow. wow. <laughs> <laughs> Catch our breath here. I'll tell you what, Mike. You know, the, the, the thing I liked about this, I do not like, and I know most people don't, I don't like games going to penalties right. and having somebody go out. Whether it was Richmond or whether it was Charleston, I'm glad we got a winner. It took 120 minutes. I'm glad we got a winner from the field of play. Exactly. I'm with you on that. So the wow. kickers, now they are still alive and... They do not have to make a trip to Orlando. They can stay in their beds, and they'll be here next Saturday night at City Stadium. Will we? I think so. I think so. <laughs> yeah. Two to one in double overtime. Richmond with the victory. Absolutely insane. And this rivalry, Mark, you have seen it uh, over the years, and uh, it's an incredible rivalry, and this uh, adds another great chapter to it. Yeah, absolutely. This is gonna This is going to go down for a while. I'm not sure if anybody is coming up or not. I'm not sure. I don't know if they can make it up the steps, <laughs> Mike. <laughs> well, uh, let's okay. Let's, let's uh, wrap things up. And uh, again, it's been an uh, emotional night, so <laughs> I don't think anybody's going to make it up here either. No, no. I tell you what, there was a great play. You know, I, 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 you can't ask for anything more from Charleston. This game easily could have gone yep. either way. Charleston controlled large parts of it. Richmond uh, controlled it early. Charleston, I think, controlled the middle part of the, right. of the, of the game, and then Richmond came on late. Um, obviously, I think the, the red card w was the big thing for Charleston. Right. Exactly. Uh, then you kind of have Delhi coming in, and on his first touch, he scores. Again, that gets back to the whole, uh, what we were saying a couple weeks ago, his number, his goals per shot. Right, is just, exactly. That's got to increase the average a little bit once you have one goal. Yeah. Recap the scoring real quick. It was Colin Martin giving uh, Richmond a 1-0 advantage in the 11th minute. But uh, Charleston would tie it in the second half in the 64th minute. Dane Kelly, and then it all set the stage for Delhi. Matthew Delacott with the game winner in the second overtime. 2-1 your final. Richmond in double overtime. On behalf of our production team and my broadcast partner, Mark Bushman, I'm Mike Neville. Once again, the final score from City Stadium, Richmond 2 Charleston won. The kickers move on. They will host the eighth-seeded Harrisburg City a week from tonight here at City Stadium. So long, everybody. From Richmond, thanks for watching.